to the power of God, I, I don't know, but there are people God is raising to become mighty vessels. I just saw an anointing rest on you, this role. In the name of Jesus, I don't know where you are, but I pray may that grace now, let it rest upon you and shift you to a new dimension. In the name of Jesus Christ. Welcome to Christocentric Message. On this channel, you are going to get soul-lifting messages, faith-based content, prayer drills, and videos that would help you grow spiritually. Remember to subscribe to the channel, like the video you are about to watch, and comment on it. Stay blessed. See, there are certain things you do that will pay you for life. One of it is designing greatness and investing in it through quality relationships. I gave an instance of people who have been so instrumental in my life. These were people who had the eyes to see when there were no physical results. And today I owe them partnership to make sure they succeed. Regardless of what their personal failures are, they are the risk they took to believe in me is a debt that I must pay for a lifetime. Who owes you gratitude because of a quality relationship? Muslims have this. They know this. They excel overnight because of the capacity to discern. Many believers have this ugly thinking that because all of us can approach God directly, we don't need men. You will always need men for as long as you are alive make reference to my teaching the gift of men you need relationships i told us relationships are advantageous connections advantageous connections there are nonsense and foolish relationships and we received grace last week to get out of it i hope that that grace worked for you during the week because there are relationships that are going nowhere complete um you have to be connected you have to be connected in ministry you have to be connected strategically in business you have to be connected we call it networking in politics you have to be connected you ask honorable here he will tell you you cannot rise no matter what God told you that is your business but as far as impact is concerned God told me I'll be great thank god he didn't tell everybody he told you you must understand the wisdom keys that will make others buy into that vision relationships will require being friendly the bible says he who wants friends must first show himself friendly this attitude of wanting people to be this you are not my class you are not my uh, what do we call it my size you are not my expectation is what is the costly mistake people have made that some are still paying for it today and they will pay forever you must have the discernment jesus understood that as powerful as his agenda was he needed men and so he was able to invest in them regardless of their failures he watched them as they stumbled they fell relationship is not about perfection relationship is about understanding you must know that perfection is not a requirement for relationship. Replace perfection with sincerity of heart. Are we learning now? Please pay attention to what I'm teaching you. This is not one of the ways people become great. This is the way people become great. You can earn a living through relationships. There are people who are not doing anything. You look at them and you think they are, they are occultists or they deal in drugs. They have invested in the lives of too many people for them to fail. They can sit down at home yet. They are all, thank you. They, thank you pays them salary every month without retirement. God is giving you an opportunity today to make quality relationships that will bless you tomorrow. It's a lesson I learned from my father like I told us last week. My father knows somebody almost everywhere. If it's an armed robber, he knows a policeman somewhere who can show up when required. Are we together now? If it's for discount for fertilizer, somebody somewhere, he knows someone in the ministry of Agri. If it's to help you bring your car from Cotonou, there is somebody he knows. What a wise way of living. 
I watch relationship pay many bills for my father if you use money to pay for everything in life you are not wise did you hear what I said let me repeat myself if you use only money to pay for everything in life everything in life is bought but money is not the only currency integrity is currency relationships are currencies heavier and weightier currencies the, the least valuable of all the currencies that we use to purchase things in life is finances. Trust me when I say this. Someone will not give you money, but he will give you what you would have bought with the money. He gave you two things. Access and he took away pain from your life. Are we together now? We must trust God for grace to be able to access quality relationships. One of the points that I did not mention last week that I, I think that I must stress before we continue is what I teach in the school of ministry. I teach our school of ministry students. Um, I call it the fundamental law of human relations. And it's important. I'm going to state it. I want you to understand. There is a key to attracting people to your life. It is the ability to satisfy the highest psychological need of every man. You must know it. And the highest psychological need of any man at all, including you, any man, is the need to feel loved, the need to feel valued or valuable, and the need to feel appreciated. Please write it down. Any man will die to see this happen in his life. The highest psychological need of any man is the need to feel loved, the need to feel valued, the need to feel appreciated. Please write it down and let's talk a little about that. Because many believers think that just because you are born again, relationships will happen overnight. No. People have lost contracts worth billions because they have intelligence but no relationships. And in the body of Christ, we have this ugly way of saying, I don't need anybody. I'm not talking of some negative Godfatherism. Somebody must recommend you somewhere. Are we together now? Come, my dear. Come too. Now, everybody, I want you to give them a round of applause. Smile while you are doing that, two of them. I will tell you why. Just clap for them generously and truthfully. Keep clapping. Don't stop. This is for two of you now. Keep clapping. I didn't ask you to stop. Praise God. God bless you. Now, watch them. What are they both doing? Or what were they both doing? Do you think if you ever tell them I'm a bad man, they will believe you? No. I satisfied in one minute the highest psychological need of any man. By this act, they don't even know what they did. But I gave them an impression of being loved. I gave them an impression of being valued. I gave them an impression of being appreciated. Brothers, let me give you a big secret. Do this, you are 50% gone to get a very good godly lady. Frown your face praying alone and I show you the way to misery regardless of spirituality. Yes time-tested, rock-solid principles. Are we together? The Bible says laughter. Listen, when two people are fighting, the first thing that disappears is laughter. Not love. Love is still there. But laughter disappears. Every time there is restoration, it is backed up with laughter. When the Lord turned again the captivity of Zion, we were like them that dream and they said among the hidden the lord had turned again their captivity and all of that you know sarah laughed all who hear this will laugh with me the ability to keep men loved the ability to keep men um feel appreciated the ability to keep men valuable is the grandest key to establishing quality relationships when you say this person is likable, whether consciously or subconsciously, their personality or their training has brought them to a position where they 
present a disposition to people that make them feel loved everyone on earth is running away from where they are hated to where they are loved and that location can be a human being they can leave you and live with the money they have and live with the access they have to someone else they i'm not talking of flattery and lies by the grace of god we have a large workforce in this ministry i am i am intrigued it never ceases to amaze me the level of commitment and diligence of the workers in this ministry and this is true from my heart truly speaking you see wise people are clapping a politician is clapping because he understands the implication of this but many people that's why you are in in the school of the spirit why do you think in campaigns anybody just says anything and they clap they are not clapping because they understand what was said they know it's a key it's a key to what you will go home with it's a key to what you might lose never allow your life be the reason for someone's tears and misery at least not with your consciousness there are some of us who have an ugly disposition towards people this lady is so ugly you are just seeing the person for the first time and you're acting that way this lady is so slim this lady is so plumpy this lady is not she can't even speak english she's not my class i show you the person who will pay for everything by himself because years to come you will open the office you are trusting for help and see the the victim of your mockery seated with the biro that can change your life and say the door you came with follow it and go out on wise decisions some of our parents made those decisions and they are still paying for it till today cheap opportunities that they would have reason these are laws they will never be bent they will never change i came from a background where we were told that when you relate with people of influence it affects your spiritual life and for a very long time i worked in that foolishness until i understood the kingdom now i'm a friend of every influential person you can be in the world and not be of the world you can be in a system and not be corrupted by the system the chairman board of trustees of this ministry is a general you touch me two people punish you from the realm of the spirit and the physical realm yeah. for sure there are many well-meaning men of god who have no one to speak for them and they come and collect a land they spend 200 million naira buying the land investing to raise it to its foundation someone comes and put a big x no prayer will change it it remains there the prayer needs a man the angels roam around the earth did you apply a law that authorizes us to walk where is the human vessel we will speak to there's no one but you are a prayer warrior you see no truth in the kingdom was designed to replace another they complement are we together now you have relationships you don't pray you will suffer no spirit talks to any man nobody helps you but you can pray you can fast you are a, a student of the word but you don't have strategic connections jesus was a man who understood this principle when it was time for him to get into jerusalem he said go there's somebody who has a coat if he asks you tell him the master has need of it the man did not refuse connections are we together now jesus had relationships he had people he could send do you know what it means to send 72 people to go and return back with loyalty david was a great man ordained to be king anointed but his anointing could not help him he was in a cave called adulam until relationships came certain men came and they vowed they said david we will make sure you are king what if they were lying to kill him the bible says in the multitude of men is a king's honor don't forget that scripture in the multitude of men not gold not silver in the multitude of men access to the hearts of men gives you true honor access to the hearts of men gives you true honor are we together now value relationships 
don't lose relationships to look for money that's that's not wisdom don't lose relationships to look for job look for opportunity it's better to lose a job and keep a valuable relationship because when everyone in your circle of influence is rising you will be blessed by association a message i preached in 2008 that a man can be blessed by association god called abraham alone and lot went with him how did lot get blessed not by any personal revelation as god lifted abraham he lifted him relationships how did jo joseph come out of the pit he, di uh, he, he didn't just have gift enough gift alone could not bring him out there was a relationship he established with a wine presser it was the wine presser that told the king i remember my wrongs two years ago there was a man who interpreted my dream he said go and fetch him the bible says and the king sent for joseph and they brought him out of his dungeon i'd like you to pray in one minute bless your darlings and say lord give me the gift of men strategic alliances valuable connections that can become keys let my life not become a padlock to many valuable relationships please pray lord let there be a man to speak for me in the days of adversity let me not fight alone hallelujah please sit down there a particular man of god was sharing his encounter with bishop Oyedepo. he used to be a pastor in living faith before he went to start his own work doing a great work for god and when he went to his father in the lord bishop Oyedepo, and said that sir what one advice will you give me he said bishop Oyedepo told him the interpret you know I'm, I'm giving the english interpretation but he told him in yoruba he said young man never fight alone you will not win did you hear what he said never fight alone nobody fights alone ask david david went alone but he didn't fight alone he said you come against me with your spares and all but i come against you in partnership to a name relationship every great man knows that his wealth is tied to relationships when you see a man mysteriously wealthy people don't say this guy has a brain they say he has gone somewhere he fraternized with someone let's hurry up work with relationships and you will be amazed at the doors they will open only four people to meeting and accessing any breakthrough you desire statistically confirmed the distance between you and your prayer request is not just a destiny helper away but statistically speaking somebody knows somebody who knows somebody who knows somebody that's how naman was healed a little slave girl who knew a prophet who could take him there and he received this miracle hallelujah law number two take notes if you can get the teachings and listen with all your heart law number two that is part of the success systems of god is the law of value another word is the law of difference you can write the law of value slash difference please write it down the law of value exodus chapter 4 verse 2 exodus chapter 4 verse 2 the law of value the law of value those outside if you're with me shout amen god bless you please make sure that the rain doesn't interrupt you i know that you are not having the best of conditions but trust me what you are hearing now will bail you and cause you to bail others praise the lord the law of value he says and the lord said unto him what is that in thy hand and he said a rod verse 2 and he said cast it on the ground and he cast it on the ground it became a serpent and moses fled before it go to verse 2 that's just verse 2 that's what i wanted and the lord said unto him what is it in your hand and he said a rod it is impossible to be sent on earth with nothing are we together what do you have in your hand 
that was the weapon that Moses used God will always use what is in your hand he will anoint you but the anointing will flow through what is in your hand the anointing needs a physical channel to find expression and the conduit that gives it expression to bless you is what you have in your hands in 2nd Kings chapter 4 verse 2 2nd Kings chapter 4 verse 2 a woman was dying they are about to sell her children because her prophet husband had died and could not um, they gave the children as a collateral and when she came to the prophet Elisha said unto her what shall I do for thee then he says tell me what do you have in your before they received breakthrough they were all asked what do you have in your hand what do you have in your house write this down the law of value states that your value which can be your skill your gift your ability is your difference and creates your rewards your value is your difference and it creates your rewards in the realm of greatness men are rewarded based on their value not based on their needs not based on their desire the idea of something for nothing is nonsense it doesn't exist value your skill your gift your ability which is also your difference now listen a, a wise man dr mike mudok a, a true apostle of wisdom said this he said your similarities decide your comfort but it is your difference that decides your rewards birds of the same birds of the same feather flock together even if they are failing they fail together but when you want to succeed truly speaking there must be your difference another word for that difference is your uniqueness it is your gift that brands you to stand out there are many people in church wallowing in so much ignorance waiting for god to step in and change their lives whereas god is asking them if you will give me the rod my duty is to anoint the rod and cause it to produce supernatural results my duty is to anoint the oil and cause it to multiply beyond your ability when it was time to feed five thousand people nothing produces a harvest of nothing and jesus said look i can't do anything go and look for bread he said feed them they said we don't have anything even a year's wages will not be able to cater for them and then andrew found a young boy with five loaves and two fish and he brought it and the bible says jesus lifted it and gave thanks god anoints your gift he does not anoint nothing you have to understand this there are many people angry at god angry at government angry at parents spouses angry with themselves not knowing that the key to any man's breakthrough has been left to him the day you decide to pay attention to the law of value that day you are ready to exit failure you are ready to exit suffering value your value creates your rewards and there are two dimensions to rewards there is a tangible dimension the money now the cars houses all the physical things that come and there is the intangible dimension the fulfillment that you get the satisfaction the peace that is derived write a few points down your value decides who pursues you ah. your value decides who pursues you you know what i mean by value now your gift your skill your ability whether supernatural whether natural if nobody is following you it's because you have not done anything about your value it doesn't mean you are not valuable it's that you've not done anything with it because he gave on to one five he gave on to one two he gave on to one one there is nobody with zero nobody with zero your value decides who pursues you 
and I wrote something down here I says who pursues you decides the magnitude of your reward your reward is dependent on the kind and the quality of men that seek you for your value please learn this many of our parents are angry nobody is seeking them to expect rewards for doing nothing is fraud there are many people who sit down and just wish that things change they get angry at every rich man they get angry at every successful man and they think everyone is diabolic everyone is a crook no no your value sets you apart in the school of greatness your value sets you apart in the school of success please learn this the difference between you and any man you admire is value redefined value refined sorry i meant to say value refined enough to be identified and pursued dr mike mudok said a problem is an invitation for reward the problems around you are god inviting you to come and step to a greater level every time you pray for the throne a goliath will stand before you he who kills goliath is the one who sits on the throne you don't desire the throne without the ability to kill goliath so before he arrives you learn how to kill learn how to kill goliath the king put a price tag three things whoever is able to kill goliath number one he will be he will receive the king's daughter for a wife two he and his family will be exempted from tax three he will be given great riches and honor and david said that's a deal let me teach you a great mystery never fight any battle till you know what the reward is there are foolish battles without rewards you sweat and kill yourself and at the end you find out there's no reward never fight any battle until you know what the reward is is god helping us i teach our school of ministry students um certain things and let me let me just borrow this from one of the um i teach them this under finance until there is a problem that you can solve you are unnecessary write this and let me show you the key to what we call inferiority the key to what we call complex this bitterness and hatred we have towards great people there is nobody that was born to just be following others we decide our destinies until there is a problem that you can solve it is unnecessary if you are not sick you don't need Benny Hinn if you are not foolish you don't need mike modok are we together now if you are not sick you don't need a doctor you don't need any furniture work you don't need a carpenter as much as doctors like healing people and ministering health to people the only way they continue eating is when they are sick people oh you have a problem go and lie down while you are lying down the victim the person who brought you goes to the cashier doesn't sit down in the office you go to the cashier you pay am i right please yes the doctor sympathizes with you dear lord the god of heaven will help you but while that is happening you are paying the doctor his salary somewhere is that true i see many things in my life i cannot do for myself and i'm shocked how much i pay for it and i'm surprised and almost um, sad that I will continue to pay for it why do you pay someone in a restaurant you don't have the knowledge or the time to cook so the one who can do the cooking collects the money is that true yes away with this anger at people there are some of us who watch our loved ones do this resentment for people there are people who see men of God with crowds. God has honored them and they are angry. So, so, so man of God. So, so, so church. It's not all about the crowd. Do you think people are idiots? A man can be stupid, but a crowd cannot be stupid. Are you hearing what I'm saying? The Bible says where the carcasses are, there the eagle will gather. Eagles are wise. 
people don't just sit down and commit their time to hear nonsense no value discover and develop problem solving abilities write it down discover and develop problem solving abilities every one of us here will succeed to the degree to which we train and build and many times receive the ability to solve problems i am passionate the day i discovered this i made up my mind i would never harass god over my my destiny again because i knew that it was in my hands if nobody is looking for you as a music artist it's a sign that you are not solving problems or you have not made it known i will share other laws if this guy raises a song now it is because that song is ministering to people he never sleeps he never slumbers who is that he solved your problem the song didn't make meaning to you till the day you saw f the song didn't make meaning till three days to your wedding and you still needed 1.2 million all of a sudden you didn't need to hear Kirk Franklin you took Don Moen he never sleeps he never slumbers and all of a sudden you now found out that ah this is why this man is blessed you that you don't need it now does not mean another person does not need it what a time we live in where there is a need for everything everything good or bad there is a need of course we are believers you don't do bad things but i'm saying every good and perfect gift has a need on it value value everything that constitutes an advantage in your life is a bailout system to get out of mediocrity get out of failure there are people like bishop td jakes uh, i was listening to one of his messages and he says there was a woman who made millions simply because of her fingers someone saw her fingers and started spotting the rings the rings of their designer the rings that they make and I mean millions. Everything God gave you is an advantage. Esther got to the throne not just because she was bright. She proved that she was bright later on. Her beauty took her to the throne. It's an advantage. Samson could kill the lion and all of that. It's an advantage. Everything in your life. Do not allow men, especially church people, to destroy your gift now you must be guided to use it especially sensitive gifts there are gifts that are very sensitive and if not guided you will lose your work with God just to get money however there is nothing God gave you that is for waste are we together now thank you your destinies are the mercy of the discovery and the development of your problem-solving abilities be a master at providing solutions and you will never be ignored be a master at providing solutions and i guarantee you, you will never be ignored at best you will be criticized by ignorant people and those who are intimidated by you and what you represent but not to be ignored be a master at solving something you must solve a problem don't sit down and roam around getting angry and hoping one day, one day it go better. That's a wise saying that has never worked for anybody. The best way to predict your future is to create it. Don't sit down and wish and hope and wait. You stand up and create it. There are people who see men of God and the privilege of the blessings that he has brought, the influence, the prosperity and all of that and people get angry. You know, people just look at a man of God and say, if a man of God is preaching the gospel and then you are this blessed, you see, if you are ignorant, just keep it to yourself so that it's easy for God to help. When you spread it, you implicate yourself the more. The Bible says, even a fool, when he's silent, is regarded wise. There is no man of God who is blessed because he's preaching. Every man of God is blessed because he's providing supernatural solutions are you hearing what i'm saying they are spiritual in their context but they are supernatural 
now you see god's reward system is such that whether you sell your value or give it free for as long as there is a dispensing of value you must be rewarded that's why a preacher will not charge you for anything yet god will reward him i will never beg for bread it's not pride it's the truth because for as long as there is one sinner to be saved for as long as there is one sick body to be healed for as long as there is one mind to be transformed for as long as there is one person desire of us of an encounter i remain valuable that's why the bible says when you see darkness covering the earth rejoice your light has come it's time for you to shine the presence of darkness is proof that you are an endangered species and nobody will push you out like that say i am valuable shout it i am valuable say in the name of jesus from today i take responsibility and i create a desirable future by solving problems every job advertisement is a declaration of need by that company we need a secretary what they are trying to tell you is that we have seen a deficiency in our services we need to outsource intelligence whoever can qualify for that receives the job is that true you must be valuable let me give you a key master one thing first you see this issue of deception i am highly multi-talented which of them has brought bread to your table i'm not i don't argue that there are many arrogant people moving around saying i'm multi-talented say what can you do you say it depends on what you want i can do everything growing up i found out i can sing i can do this you see people what do you do you say anything you sell water excellently i mean i mean i are you in real estate yes i am are you in this i am i make hair too i can cook you know you see a restaurant one side is carpentry one side they are selling food another side they are selling drugs and selling gin and selling all kinds of things you must be specific your value brands you it helps everybody know when to need you there is nobody you see who does only what they are known for but like the door to a house every house has what you call a master door everybody say master door it is the master door that gives you access to other doors if the master door is closed you cannot access the door to the kitchen you can't access the door to the toilet so there are other potentials but there is one that will bring you to notoriety are we together now learn this don't just tell people i can do everything and then it means i don't need you I don't need you if i want to sing i need the worship team if our sound is bad you see us begging the technical help us if we need order we need the protocol department if we need media capture and then following with our social media platforms we need the media department any department we don't need has not been created in this ministry the day the need arises we create it just like you you roam around and there's nothing to draw men to you when jesus showed up the bible says in the book of mark one two three when you read he said all men seek for thee all men seek for thee they don't seek you just because they love you the world is full of people who also want to achieve their goals whoever is valuable becomes the center of attraction miles munro dr miles munro gave us a very beautiful analogy and this is how he put it he said during um, now let me use it in our context Nigerians when it is rainy season everybody starts looking at a mango tree happy and expectant the same mango tree you will sit under and gist for hours and argue and not even know the color and look at everything but the moment it is rainy season and the mango fruits start coming out are we together people come and they can climb trees and do everything you know i had to cut the mango tree at my place because in the night there were all kinds of things you would hear someone walking literally just climb the tree and trying to catch the ones that were trapped you know and all of that early in the morning five o'clock god is my witness you hear people running once it rains or wind shakes the place in like 10 minutes somebody's around with pocket fighting and i said no i can't continue so i took away that value from that environment and naturally the people went somewhere else listen 
this is how nations attract attention they come up with policies that create problems then when it creates problems you come and meet them and say i thought i told you let's negotiate and you refused now there is a problem and you need us here are the terms may you be so valuable that no price pays on you becomes too much that you are so valuable be as valuable as oil look at oil during scarcity when you want to put fuel gas you are on the queue it is your money yet you are still begging somebody helps you to pass and you say thank you sir yet you paid that's called value that you are so valuable that people bless you and call it a privilege are we together now i aspire as a person to be so valuable to the body serving the purposes of the kingdom within the the dimension of the grace and calling he has given me that no level of physical and spiritual reward it is my desire that nobody will ever bless me one day thinking he did me a favor value value somebody sowed a seed into my life one time and in two days something dramatic happened in his life and he called me say apostle i have another one i said that's it it's not that i need the seed but i said you see that nobody leaves what works human beings are not stupid when people change for from uh, they change formulas and all of that is because it's not working the day you shake hands with somebody how are you sir and he says good morning and from that day people come and queue in his shop the day you are passing say bros come now i have free your god for you because he has identified like um obededom that something was introduced to his environment that brought him an advantage the law of value i learned this law it changed my life by the privilege of god's grace this is what is helping us as a ministry the more valuable we become to the purposes of god the agenda of god and the needs of men the more we continue to rise a day will come when we will wave the flags of nations tens and hundreds of nations why because our value would have extended to those territories they will come yes they will come for as long as there is sickness in the world they will come for as long as there is oppression they will come people flow from the realm of ignorance to where there is knowledge pray one prayer as we continue lord whatever has made men ignore me whatever has made my helpers ignore me i receive grace to work on myself don't just blame the devil and keep insulting people my father didn't do this my mother didn't do this outside inside online pray make me valuable make me valuable so valuable in the area of designs make me valuable as a tailor let me not be a tailor that is when every other professional tailor rejects then they come to me as a caterer let me be so exceptional as a businessman let me be so exceptional as a student let me be so exceptional let my education center let my school be so exceptional that men will want to come there to identify with it let the anointing on my life be so exceptional that gentiles will run to that light and their kings to the brightness of my rising lord let me have something to give my generation i'm tired of escorting people i'm tired of competition pray i'm tired of hating people and blaming people there is something you have put within my spirit that can give me a place among the great there is a place you have put upon my spirit that can compel the loyalty of my helpers give me grace to be valuable grace to be valuable hallelujah are you learning something never forget this your reward is tied to your value your reward listen we were not designed to live off miracles a miracle is a sign that something went wrong 
and God is stepping supernaturally. We were designed to live by principles. Principles. A miracle is God's intervention. But you cannot, you can get miracle money, but you don't, you don't live with miracle money. You live with principles. You can get the act of God's mercy step into your life in a season. But if you want to be great, it has to be by laws. Are you getting blessed? The Lord is leading us. He's helping us. You may look weak now, but take what I'm saying seriously and watch your life grow. Follow these laws and you watch your desires follow you. Like the animals came helplessly to the ark of Noah. You may not believe me, but believe the truths I'm teaching. Hallelujah. The third law that I want to teach you, connecting with the second law now, wherever we can stop tonight, there's a lot to cover, is the law of competence and excellence. The law of value talks of recognition of what you have. But the law of excellence, competence and excellence, the fourth law, that governs God's success systems. Please listen carefully. Proverbs 22, 29. Please give it to us media very fast. The law of competence. Everybody say competence. Say excellence. One more time. Say competence. Say excellence. Now if you're a believer, read that scripture projected. Let's read together. One, two, read. Seest thou a man. Aha. Uh -huh diligent in his business he shall stand before kings he shall not stand before mean men no specific person no specific person seest thou a man not the man any man any man who chooses to assume this posture of diligence that produces competence produces excellence remember we define terminologies excellence is maintaining is is the highest producing the highest quality at your level excellence producing the highest quality at your level excellence means to surpass ordinary standards i read a book years ago called the enemy an enemy called average by john mason i think that was 2005 or so and that book changed my life forever because you see many of us especially africans were born in this lifestyle of mediocrity and when we give our lives to christ sometimes if not correctly taught we think that what we have come into is a license and an excuse for mediocrity mediocrity means living in a common realm having no passion for surpassing the ordinary there is nothing mediocre that eventually becomes great it may not be bad but it will not bring you to greatness the law of competence write this down competence and excellence are magnets competence and excellence are magnets attracting people attracting opportunities attracting resources competence and excellence are magnets attracting people attracting opportunities attracting resources we're on our way to better days you see us sing this song we're on our way to better days it's not just a special number it's the truth we're on our way to better days have you learned to use that magnet called excellence discovering your potentials obeying the law of value is a good start but in itself will not activate success systems in your life it is value that is excellently dispensed value that is communicated with competence what is competence thoroughness predictability of results there are many anointed people who are not competent 
competence in anything there are business people who are not competent there are students who are not competent there are workers who are not competent your certificate gives you a job your competence promotes you your certificate gives you a job and that's where it stops it is competence that promotes you every time a company is about to be downsized who do you think are the ones that they send away the ones that the company perceives to be less valuable in terms of competence discovery is important but development qualifies you to sit with the great discovery is important but development refining is what qualifies you to sit with the great you don't sit at the seat of greatness simply because you discovered your potentials that is important but alongside the law of value knowing your difference is not alone enough building your difference to a point that is worthy of reward is what we're talking about um someone was over i think he was the head of department uh, media he was over at my place and um you know he was served a very sumptuous very very sumptuous meal and you know i was just watching him serving himself and helping himself adding this adding that adding chicken adding fish adding this and i was watching him and then i told him i said if this were a restaurant how much will you pay and then he looked i i, I was just reminiscing on my teaching tonight listen please help me with this how much is this 20 naira let's say 100 naira let's use a round figure this is 100 naira will you pay 1000 naira for this i'm not talking of free will donation will you go to a shop and pay 1000 why what will you say if i sell this 1000 to you it's too much because you feel that this is valuable but not to that degree is that true if your school fees is 30000 you may not complain even if you complain you may just pay it there is no school that has if you go take your child to a school and they tell you that school is 100 naira will you admit your child there I know you are crying recession but you carry your heart and child except if you just got somebody from the street but you took your child how much is the school fees and you're about bringing out your checkbook and no, no no sir it's 100 naira 100 naira for what for the entire three three um, um what they call them three terms first term second term third time say that's how we are in this school automatically you already know what is going to happen to the destiny of your child There are times that the prices of things are high but we are happy paying for them because we know that there has been development to a level that will commensurately pay you is that true yes competence reject mediocrity write it down i reject mediocrity you have to write it personalize it don't say we reject this is not a corporate thing you must reject it personally there are many believers who are not competent apostle i make her pray for my my um my what, what they call my salon someone comes to your son you burn their hair you charge high you finish late you are frowning heat is killing them there and close to close to the um the television is one bottle of anointing oil there very dirty dusty around dirty place the gutter is smelling there's a bottle of minerals close to that gutter and you say please pay 100 naira for it and the person say what what is your idea of me just because i came to spend three hours to make my hair praise god people have traveled from region to region to go somewhere and be able to buy certain things because they are looking for quality let me tell you not everyone is afraid of quality there are people who have conquered price what they are looking for is quality did you hear what i said yes oh but if i put quality everybody around my area cannot pay for it you don't need everybody one person can equal 200 mediocre 
one person who likes you pastor david biome was sharing and saying that he noticed that the, those who sold his clothes they will collect measurement of 11 and so 13. he said they, they will never return back to him again but then one they would sew three clothes the same measurement one will look as if you know and then the other one he said what sort of people are you you are not competent and some of them were members of his church he said no i love you but i can't use you then he found somebody who charged twice the price and he looked at the person and he said why are you charging twice the price and the person says sir i know what i can deliver according to him and he says okay i'm impressed let me give you a trial he said when he came back with that clothes david Ibiome said that's it you are the one who will sow my traditionals now one david Ibiome is worth some cities i think i like that kind of business why labor to get two 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 naira from everybody when i can get one million from one loyal person don't allow environment make you compromise on quality because impressions 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 are important you give a negative impression about your shop the day you change people will still think you are like yesterday you now went for a three months tailoring school and now you have become a pro tailor but everybody looks at you and says don't waste your time going to that woman do you know god is my witness i once saw a wedding cloth ejimi wedding a lady's wedding gown i never would believe they sold that thing in nigeria i thought it was maybe you know london school of tailoring or one of these um gucci or versace and all of that and they told me a, a tailor made a tailor in the north here i mean with with a level of precision now those people are not noise makers you may not see them on facebook but they are the types if you call them they don't even pick your call if you are ready to spend five hundred thousand on a wedding gown get to them in a year they, they sow for 100 people only they are building estates and other people are there saying say it depends on your level which time if you want for ten thousand i can sow and then a night to the wedding that's when they bring it and it's raining you can't wash it they bring a white wedding gown that is smelling fabric is bad is torn they say you know they, you didn't finish paying yourself you you spoil another person's wedding simply because of incompetence and he said please if you know any other person bring no no nobody does that listen excellence is self-marketing excellence is self-marketing being excellent to one person is the same as attracting 100 people the money you will use to attract 100 people can be saved in creating an excellent outcome everybody say excellence look at me there are many of us right now what you are writing on what you are writing on is a piece of paper that you could not even tear orderly that is a piece of paper is an issue but the discipline to just tear it and create synergy you don't have that patience you just tear everything and you are writing something that will change your destiny you're not excellent you see excellence is a culture it starts from your life you don't try to pretend it outside you eat you don't wash the plate you are not excellent you wash the plate you don't throw away the dirty water you are not excellent you use the same soap to bath wash clean mop or the same rag your sponge case for your shoe you are not excellent are we together don't laugh at anybody god is speaking to you you enter to bath like i was teaching school of ministry students some of you bath in one minute you they ask you a question you are answering it while you are bathing you will think you are flushing the toilet you just hear Shua! and you are out no you are not excellent sir you are not excellent are we together wearing one boxer for two weeks you are not excellent wearing one torn singlet smelling it to see if it's still usable you are not excellent ironing clothes with sweat on it and seeing it rise and you are, you are not excellent
Are we together? You are laughing. Ask those who this thing has cost them so much. Do you know just there are people, someone like me, I eat emotionally before my mouth touches it. Presentation matters as much as what it is. You don't cook nonsense and say the most important thing is your body. No. Why did God give me eyes? Are we together now? You have a restaurant. I carry your spoon. Somebody took Gary with the spoon. And you, obviously they were washing it in a hurry and you see the trace. Why should I remain there? Let's tell ourselves the truth tonight. Success systems. There's oil all around. They have to call you, Madam, come and clean this table now. You just send one lady who frowns around, comes out as if everybody has offended her, just pushes the rug across the table. <laughs> Pours the water on you and goes. Madam, give me rice, beans, towel, and one other part. She goes to go and bring swallow. No attention to details. After 20 or I'm showing us little things. No attention to details. Iron someone's cloth. You go and burn the cloth. You don't know how much the cloth is. I say, sir. I, I decided, I, I remember one guy who wanted me to start um, doing dry cleaning with him and so he said he wanted to do something. I said, okay, let me try you. I gave him a suit. He returned it after like one month. I don't know what he did on it. I said, thank you. I gave it to somebody and I knew that. Even him, he knew that he had lost that opportunity forever. Let's stop saying God is not looking down on us. I'm showing you how God comes but we cannot receive because we don't understand his systems. One day, I will cook for the governor. Who are you? With what you are doing now? You are not training yourself. The governor is not an idiot. The government house is not a zoo. If you want to cook well, you must be competent. Don't throw anything at anybody. Are we together now? How about Babas? How about Babas? How about Babas? There are people who pay as much as four, five thousand just to bob their hair. You think they are lavishing money. They are not ready to risk their hair. Are we together? You bring out a clipper. You don't even know whether it's sharp or not. You injure someone all around because you are bobbing. Don't, don't laugh. These are ways that anything can take you to the top if it's excellent. It's not just shell. It's not just oil and gas. It's a determination to be thorough. Pay attention to details. Listen to the instructions. No assumption. You met somebody. God is introducing a great businessman to you about to take a risk with you he says call me by 2 p.m tomorrow it's by 1 30 you sleep are you a serious person you get up and start ringing his phone by four i say no you have to pray apostle this guy is not picking my my call why should he pick your call maybe that guy is in church for evening service maybe he's a deacon you are ringing by seven you are ringing his number he told you call me by two someone tells you i want to give you a job i want to help you come by two you stroll carelessly by 2 30 and say uncle just to let you know i'm around you know you won't get the job because some jobs are the lives of people are dependent on it excellence you have one shoe you polish it you comb your hair well don't dress around like a thief going to the house of god you look smart say i'm not i'm not a man of god it doesn't mean you should be like that you are smart it's not about having money excellence your notebooks you bind them well if they are torn you fix them you fix your bible are we together now your environment is neat very neat we come into your kitchen we see it neat we come into your toilet we see it neat we come into the living room we see it neat that's excellence don't say we were not trained that way. That's why God is bringing you. Koinonia is a school and you are learning. Are we together? Is God helping us? 
the law of competence how to be competent quickly now that i've challenged your mediocrity how do i become competent number one you must have a reference you cannot be excellent and competent when there is no reference a reference means an individual that reflects your aspiration there must be someone even if you plan to surpass that level there must be a reference oh i want to become a great worship minister i have a reference like don moen now that gives you a standard to start climbing the ladder when you become like don moen you now earn the right to go higher but not when you are down i want to be great like who i'm unique oh yes you are unique but you need a reference the bible said ask for the ancient parts that means someone walked in it before you are you hearing what i'm saying now you must have a reference look at me hold on mike if you do not have a reference for ministry for business you want to become a great man of god like who who represents a model because that's the life you are going to understudy that's going to be your case study i want to become a business mogul like who you just mentioned one hilarious name how many videos of that person do you have have you ever gone for a seminar organized by that person no competence and excellence is based on a reference i always challenge every department in this ministry to have a modern ministry whose whose um whose who reflect their aspiration so every department has a reference that they can look up to for inspiration references are important because we draw inspiration from them if your reference is small your outcomes will be small you see when your references are people of mediocrity you will hit it too fast even when you don't do much and so you will not aspire to rise number two how to be competent submit yourself to mentorship now that you have references i told you last week that mentorship and training is the only way to be successful trust me when i say this mentorship is not listening to a man mentorship is submitting yourself to build the character the traits the habits the principles and the secrets of a man submitting yourself to build the character the traits the habits the principles the secrets I take it again the character the traits the habits the principles the secrets of a man that's what you do when you are when you are receiving mentorship it's not just to go and package yourself for nothing no you sit down why is this person getting these results what is he doing that i'm not doing why does benny Hinn stand on stage and 40 people rise up on the wheelchair and he has not started praying is it that god is unfair to me god you called me to have the healing anointing but what is it about what's the difference between me and benny Hinn? then you study his prayer life you may never have that close access to him so you take advantage of his materials you know a lot of people call me and say sir i want you to mentor me can i be calling you anytime i say no he says so how do you mentor me i said that's why i'm teaching i'm teaching all the time there's koinonia radio our teachings are free listen they say i have it i say that's why you will never learn mentorship is not listening to a radio program or a tv program i've shared with a school of ministry students there are times it takes me three days to watch a one hour video three days to watch a one hour video because almost every two two minutes i'm stopping this man said this i have to listen that's mentorship you submit yourself to read between the lines ah he just said the power of god will touch somebody outside and somebody was shouting how did he know was that the word of knowledge man this guy is powerful that's excitement that's not mentorship there are too many excited people who just see results and don't know the secrets 
I was told, I don't know if it's true or not, but I was told one great man of God, Bishop um, Abioye, that one time one man said he wanted to, you know, find out the secret of his prayer life. And he said, fine, let's pray. And that they prayed after a long time. The guy was yawning. He wanted to sleep. And then Bishop Abioye told him, okay, we've given thanks. Now let's pray. And the guy was almost dying. <laughs> If that story is true, that guy is not wise. What do you think the anointing is? You think the anointing is a charm? Even a charm, go and ask a herbalist the price for a charm that can throw a man down. Not give him miracles, just push a man against gravity. The secret of great men is in their stories. Pay attention when a great man is giving you examples. Pay attention when a great man is giving you stories. They are trying to bring a principle. Many people laugh at the stories. Parables and mysteries enshrined in stories. You can see the stories and laugh. And be raptured by the humor of the communication. And miss out on the meaning of it. I'm not against laughing. Be happy. But you must be able to see when others are looking. Are we together? Submit yourself to mentorship. Number three understand believe and live by the principles land how to be competent one you must have a reference to submit yourself to mentorship three understand believe and live by the principles land it's not enough to just say i know he told me this understand what you have been taught believe what you have been taught let me tell you something i have discovered something with the body of christ many people who supposedly submit themselves to mentorship don't believe half of what they have been told when you don't believe a man don't ever listen to him for mentorship because you'll be wasting your time you have a right to vet a man and do you believe this don't sit down and you are not complete you are not producing any result and you are there and someone is teaching on the anointing i say no i don't just because he made a mistake with one Greek word, he said, no, I have the, the modern lexicon. Or God, who, who did you get out of a wheelchair? Whose eye opened? That's the summary of this thing we are talking about. Whose eye opened? Whose life changed? You prophesied on somebody, everything was wrong. Sit down. Sit down. Don't just say the person does not have faith. You are, you are, you are, you are messing up. If it's not working, it's not working. Sit down. When I see people who communicate dimensions that are not at work in my life, even if I don't exactly understand what they are saying, I sit down and try to discern the spirit of what they are saying. Because sometimes it may be that they are not able to communicate. Maybe a businessman, a smart businessman who is, let's say, um, he's somebody who is not very, he just used street sense. But in that street sense, he kept acquiring principles. Now, he may be sharing business secrets. He may not intelligently articulate it like someone who went to Harvard Business School will. But you can discern the spirit of his communication. Not to sit down and say, Kai, this carpenter now, wow. but he's the number one carpenter. Do you know why rich people are coming to him? Maybe the man, every two, two months, he will package a seed and squeeze it and take it to his reverend. That may be his edge while you are listening to him one day in passing he will reveal a secret and say that's my pastor let me tell you something you see that man that man is powerful say talk to me say i used to the only thing i used to make before was coffin and then one day he called me prophesied to me now i make bed i even have a timber shed now he did not say it intelligently but you have picked a principle years ago i was in abuja and i took a cab when I took a cab, we were discussing with the driver because sometimes I crack jokes with them. I say, ah, oh God, you poor are enjoying. They say, ah, my chama and Abba, I'm not enjoying. And then he, we're talking about money. And then later the man said, oh God, you know, say this money, eh? That the thing has a spirit. And then I started listening to him. He said, do you know that he tried to build a house in Abuja? He tried and tried, could not build. But he said he saved and took the money out of Abuja and in four months he built I discern something that guy was saying he was communicating a deep mystery but because of his the barrier in communication are we together now listen 
if you don't have results in your life you are not a colleague to the person who has results sit down humble yourself believe learn if you don't believe it will not work for you you don't only believe the principle you must believe the communicator are we together now yes. a woman didn't go to school she's taking care of 10 of her children and you are there i am a lawyer i'm a barrister and the madam is saying let me tell you this i flogged my child from age one to seven when my child was in my womb i was anointing my womb with oil now he's not saying you should repeat the anointing discern the mystery of what she was saying she may now tell you that i took one night vigil for all my children before they were born you are now learning secrets you apply the same thing and change any dull head in your life to an intelligent child no matter what the limitations are listen one of the greatest ways of receiving mentorship is observation don't wait for a great man to tell you everything there are people who look and say ah, is this all there are people who have never seen but observe you observe when the power of god is about to come how does he behave observation observation jesus was speaking to them and saying, you can look at the clouds and through observation know that it is rainy season you can learn a lot through observation every time you enter the presence of a great man be observant you see him keeping laws oh somebody disappoints him and he doesn't quarrel the person in public he says okay that's all right we'll go and see oh oh god the poor man now wants to kneel down and says all right let's go you are learning you are the one who quarrels your house help in front of everybody and before you know it they start calling the house help the name you are calling you insult your wife in front of everybody don't mind this useless woman very soon your friend will say that's why he's calling you a useless woman because you are making men reflect what you are communicating principles say i receive grace to be observant say it again i receive grace to be observant and then number four the fourth way to be competent remain connected never disconnect from those who lift you up it's foolishness a time may come in your life you feel you don't need them again in terms of the dynamics of what they are teaching you but that's when great men fall no matter how tall a skyscraper is it remains for as long as he's still connected to the ground there's no skyscraper that says i am i am 500 meters into the air i can disconnect no sir are we together yes are you learning let me give us two more laws and then we'll be done is god helping us <laughs> you know look at this let me tell you this if you're a businessman listen twice to what i'm teaching you and everybody's in business i hope you know business is simply solving a problem for an agreed reward it's not wearing suits and sitting in business class business is solving a problem for an agreed reward simple most men think men of god don't know anything about business you know when they look at men of god they just feel we are just daft people you are praying and fasting you don't know anything see see still this pride we are talking about what do you think managing people is what do you think managing resources are what do you think multiplying them is are we together now the law of the mind number what number four am i right five thank you number one is i'm the one teaching listen number one is the law of relationships am i right number two the law of value number three the law of competence and excellence oh that's true how to be competent is part of it number four the law of the mind jesus the law of the mind proverbs chapter 23 verse 7 is god helping us as i teach you you should be seeing the loopholes what laws you are not keeping 
that is deactivating the systems of success in your life 23 verse 7 proverbs for as he thinketh in his heart it's interchanged with the word mind so is he not so he will be as you are thinking you already are the bible creates your um references your physical reality to what is happening in your mind the bible says in proverbs 4 23 guard your heart proverbs 4 23 guard your heart with all diligence it says for from out of it are the issues of life guard it it is a guard your head it is a guard your legs guard your heart you don't cover yourself the worst is you catch cold and mosquitoes can disturb you but you don't protect your mind you will fail in life listen being filled with the holy spirit does not negate the need to transform and build your mind the law of the mind what does it state as it is in your mind so it will be in your life as it is in your mind so it will be in your life trust me your physical reality is a messless reflection of the summation of your understanding your thought patterns as it is in your mind so it will be in your life a great mentor says you become what you think about how true you become what you think about your life is a reflection of your most dominant thoughts your life is a reflection the quality of your life today is a reflection of your understanding about God about life the quality of your life today is a reflection of your paradigms are we getting blessed the mind is a mystery that i want all of us we've had several teachings here on the mind but it's important for you to understand the mind my life changed this law alone changed me like day and night the law of the mind that my the quality of my life today is a reflection of my mind your mind is a miracle your mind is a gold mine it literally is literally is literally is write this down your mind is an extraordinarily fertile garden your mind is an extraordinarily fertile garden full stop write it down your mind is an extraordinarily fertile garden it will grow any seed planted and watered it will grow any seed that is planted and watered in agric science they teach that there are several kinds of soils i don't know if they've discovered others but as far as i remember they taught loamy soil clay soil what other one sandy soil and every other auxiliary one that comes as a combination of them your mind is in is a perfect garden sustaining the ability to grow any seed that is planted and watered no matter what is planted in your mind if it lands on that soil and you water it and i'll tell you how to water it it must grow unfortunately it does not grow in your mind it grows in your life you plant it in your mind it grows in your life look at your life the summation of everything in your life your finances your peace your understanding your excellence your relationships everything in your life is a sum total of your paradigm it's an uncomfortable truth many people will not want to admit but it's true apostle nothing is working no friends in my life no favor in my life there is an inaccurate understanding or a poor understanding you are sustaining listen your ignorance is a seed you can plant it in your mind and it will bring you a bumper harvest let me tell you what ignorance produces pain frustration disappointment these are all harvests of the seed of ignorance it's rainy season all the time in your mind your mind has no dry season it's rainy season 
all the time capacity to produce anything there's no barrenness with the mind there's only wrong seeds planted in the mind and i'm standing here only because you made you made a way made a way when our backs were against the wall and it looked as if it was over you made a way and we're standing here only because Sing you one more time. outside of salvation is not the healing of your body listen carefully there are people with no legs who are changing the world there are people with no eyes who are changing the world but there is nobody with an unfruitful mind who can change the world the worst thing that can happen to a man is not his eyes missing not the legs not the mouth there is a scientist I don't know his name who had a, a disease that literally crippled him yet he's one of the smartest scientists in the world nothing else in your life is worth crying for till you lose your mind the worst sickness in life is madness not blindness not blindness madness if I give you one billion and I make you mad have I blessed you please talk to me yes there are people who have built empires in fact there's a book like that empires of the mind and it's worth reading very powerful book you have to learn and understand this mystery called the mind many believers are not interested like some of you probably are as I'm talking now you're like, oh mind bring another thing now look you will never be great I'm sharing you with you the principles that I have lived by you have seen the anointing and the grace of God upon my life I'm showing you the other sides to these success systems because many people just think oh these people are just privileged no sir these are systems they make your life and your outcome predictable. You never truly rise above your mindset. You never truly rise. Underline the word truly. You never truly rise above your mindset. You may jump above it for a while, but I assure you, you will never truly rise your life will only rise to match the level of your mindset no matter how you manipulate it your mindset is what shows the quality of your life i wrote down something here i want you to listen to i don't know if you can have the speed to write it but listen first if you attempt to change your life without changing your mind your mindset will compel behaviors that will force your life to return back and reflect the level of your mind you know how you pull a rubber ring you can pull it and it becomes elastic and you think it will remain like that the moment you push it what happens it returns back that's how many people are if you attempt to change your life change your shoe <laughs> change your suit change your hair change watch change cars and all these mundane things that we use around to prove that you are successful you attempt to change them first without changing your mind your mind will cause them to disappear until your life returns back to the level of your mind see i have seen this thing work too many times 
have you i've given this example here i believe have you seen someone that you used a dress for one year and people would think you just sold it because the dress is reflecting the quality of your mindset that maintenance culture of excellence reflected on the dress carry it as a gift and give a tongue-talking careless believer who is not prepared to work on their minds give them two weeks you know what you see the shirt will reflect their mind they won't iron it they won't wash it the color will change they won't care it will tear they won't sew it later on you will check and see that they now use it to wash a car two months hollandis that you spend money to buy you decided to sew it in two months they are using it to wash motorcycle that's the mindset so that person's mindset changed that fabric to come back to the level in my life i've had the privilege by the grace of god to bless people financially usually they come and they tell you sir i have an idea i have this if you only give me this money i will never return back and i look at them and i say what is your idea of success because you think all you need to be great and i'm correcting many of us here right now because there are people about to make that mistake you think all you need is hundred thousand two hundred thousand if it left you it is not your hand that took it away it's your mind that took it away so you must correct something in your mind first before having it back are we together now the most difficult person to help is the man who is resistant to positive mental transformation the most difficult person to help the most difficult person to help is the man who is resistant to positive mental transformation the moment you find a man who is resistant to change in terms of mindset you have found a man who has defined himself as being hopeless I have seen great people rise and didn't pay attention to rise first in the mind I've seen people inherit money I've seen people win lottery millions of dollars and their mindsets created behavioral patterns that drove everything away from them having physical things without a transformed mind is like having a jeep without knowing how to drive it's not if you will have accident it's when are we together now you can manage to navigate your way driving nonsense and arrive safely and then one day you decide to pack passengers and travel that's the day you die you see that and you can die the death of a fool listen packaging without mental upgrade will lead to frustration write it nigerians packaging without mental upgrade will lead to i was almost saying like lead to nigeria will lead to frustration packaging you know what we call packaging paying attention to the physical form now it is important appearance is important appearance is the seed for acceptance so don't don't ignore appearance is important because it is the seed for acceptance joseph had to shave his beard to stand before pharaoh so acceptance is the seed i mean appearance is the seed for acceptance however packaging having physical things around you now listen many of us young people have a very big there's a big mistake we're making everybody wants to buy a car everybody wants to buy a shoe oh that great man is wearing Versace is wearing Gucci wearing Louis Vuitton and me too I want to get all these designers I want to and then you now try and save and save and beg and steal and raise money and then buy the shoe buy the hair buy everything so physically you look let me tell you something a great man and a great name are not the same if your name is greater than you you are in trouble you must rise to get to the level of your name i will make your name great does not mean you are great it's, it's a disappointing thing for your name to be greater than you 
God makes your name great as an act of mercy so that you can quickly catch up. Are we blessed? The law of the mind. There's too much packaging. Packaging. I know people who years ago as students were behaving like bankers. A student will buy a suit of 40,000. A student will not cook. No, 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 no. I don't have that time. I don't, uh, I don't like okra soup. Do you have that option? No. Whoever pays creates the rules. You cannot, somebody cannot pay and you say, I don't like okra. There are people who try to live a life. You have not built your mind. There are so many people holding briefcases today. Arrogant people. You see them, they move around wearing suits, loitering our streets. You ask them, what do we do? Say, it depends on which, which company. I have five companies. Uh, I'm the CEO of this. What do you do? Well, we are into logistics. What do you mean logistics? Logistics is like saying, I'm studying science. What do you do? I'm into real, real estate. What do you know about real estate? Well, my uncle gave me one land to sell. You are not into real estate. Are we together now? I am this, I'm into that. I'm, I'm, I'm one of, in fact, by the grace of God, it's just that I don't want to talk too loud. I'm one of the top fashion people in this, this town. Who knows you? Who has patronized you? We make too much noise, whereas our results cannot match it. It is better for people to have a low expectation over you and then your results shock them than to make so much noise. I can cook for 1,000 people. Just give me this money. I know what I'm saying. Is it cooking? What is there in cooking? Then the food is smelling smoke all around. Burnt the meat. Burnt the food. Burnt everything. Packaging is good. But have content. Have content. Build your mind. Buy the truth buy books buy materials i can spend the whole night teaching on the mind focus on changing your mind brothers and sisters and i promise you your life will change don't don't get into this pressure of living a fake life if all you have today is gary take it with honor use your 2000 naira buy a bible buy a book read Pay for seminars you are buying the truth you are investing your destiny yes i know you have one trouser the trouser is torn around sew it with honor let them laugh at you a day will come you will own a clothing line all these things somebody just finishes a graduate you are moving around when you are going somewhere you go and change ten thousand naira and um, you have twenty thousand savings you change twenty thousand to five hundred naira new note and you just go and dash and say well this is part of what god has done now you take look at the fake life social media has helped us to live very fake lives now there are positive aspects of it people snap near cars that are not their own they stand near a plane and snap they do all kinds so you don't even know it's better for you to know where you are so that you can rise there is a way you live a life that is too fake you don't even know that is fake again are we together you go to a house that is not near your house stand in front of the gate just put one leg and snap and then you go around now let me tell you what you, every time you create expectations that are higher than your capacity what you do is that you cause men to expect more from you are we together Packaging without mental upgrade will always lead to frustration. There are many pastors. I love them. I love the body of Christ. But you see a lot of people. This guy will wear suit. You think if you match the ground, every wheelchair will stand up. Wear the suit. Wear tie. Wear all kinds of things. Pocket square. All kinds of things. Bible. iPad. Another book. One protocol. One for whoever it is that is standing by the side. And you hold the mic. One scripture you can quote. One prayer you can pray. Man of God. I don't know what to do about my finances. It's well. God will attend to your needs. Look at the answer he's giving. No knowledge of the principles of the kingdom. 
yet you are the first to spend all your money so every you go to a meeting like this you come for koinonia stand outside and snap and use it to publicize your church you say come there is an overflowing abundance of people there are four members in your church it's not a thing to laugh at god is going to lift you you see people live all kinds of fake lives you don't know what is true and what is not true you are selling rappers it's all right but you go somewhere to one big boutique and snap yourself and say me in one of my shops you are lying it is the truth that sets free brothers and sisters not everybody dances to a fake life there are people who can see you and say i know you are starting but i'm taking the risk to lift you and support you are we together yes say i receive grace to work on my mind first ladies some of you spend all kinds of hilarious amount on hair on rings on clothes on hands you are creating an impression are you working no well how much is your salary per month it just comes as as a favor opens up doors for me anyhow so why are you living like that a restaurant that everybody there is a ceo you too you enter there number one you have not grown to that level so you don't even know that they don't call people the, see with every lifting life teaches you the protocol of that realm when you force yourself into that realm you don't know the protocol of that realm if you have truly gotten to that level let me tell you the justice system of god is such that you will learn the day you can get to a restaurant where it's a buffet you will already know the precepts of that level be careful let me speak to some of us here who are leaders business leaders ministry people be careful as you attempt to lift people don't be so sympathetic about people that you lift them beyond their current level of dealing with god in a bid to help them you will expose them to dimensions they are not prepared for and it will destroy them sometimes you see people crying somebody just comes to you and says ah, i have a crusade eh? money is not coming say really oh yeah bring your account two million God is trying to teach him how to trust. You destroyed that lecture. You gave the guy two million. Do you know what he's going to say? He will arrow. He was begging you, crying, but he will arrogantly stand before his members and say, "If you have ever doubted that there's oil on my head, go and check my bank account." Now that guy has not learned anything. Most people will use your help to prove that they had faith. They didn't know you helped them. Me, I don't pray. I don't pray. Things just happen in my life. I'm, I'm like that. I mean, all this, I don't waste my time praying because you somebody's you have been reaping somebody's seed the day your farm will be open you will see that uh, what they call that thing shifting cultivation that you have to allow a farm for it because you have allowed it bush fallow what they call all those agri terminologies you have to sit down for years tilling the ground you left for a long time corporate success is good for the organization but dangerous for individuals because you won't know who is really producing the result see they, let, let me let me encourage you everyone especially the workers in this ministry we share our success now i've taught in this ministry the principles of shared dominion if somebody says today apostle you are very anointed we share it i'm not anointed alone there were people who made that possible however be careful lest you hide in the midst of crowd to say we are moving forward are you moving forward that's the danger with things like group work 10 people can do an assignment only two are serious the remaining two will sleep all of them will get nine over ten and the other person will come and say kai god is faithful you are not smart you are not learning in the office they give assignments and they come and give everybody bonuses and you are rejoicing yet you are not growing enjoy corporate success but vet yourself to make sure you are an active contributor that your input is in that equation of success how is the mind renewed quickly if this is what we can take we we'll just stop here how is the mind renewed we need to learn how to transform the mind number one a recognition transformation starts with a recognition that your old ideas cannot take you to your destiny transformation of the mind 
starts with a recognition that your old ideas the ideas that are currently resident within your mind are not sufficient to take you to the place of destiny that's the first key a recognition that something i know now is limiting me or something i do not know is limiting me that's the first step whoever can recognize that that is my place of destiny but as it is where i am now cannot take me there leads us to point number two the second key to the renewal of the mind is access to new ideas access to revelation access to useful information you can't think the way you are thinking now and rise as a pastor as a businessman as a career person as a student as a family man as a wife as a mother as a child no your thought process thus far is what brought you where you are so you have to think i look at my life today and i look at it maybe five six seven eight years i look at the things i knew and i'm surprised that i could even rise with that level of knowledge because compared to what i know now i was in total ignorance i probably would have argued then but truly speaking i would say i was in total ignorance understanding the systems of god now i'm in shock that's why i glorify god because i see his mercy all the way there is something you can know that will take your church to the next level there is something koinonia can know now that can open us to a new season see leaders learn this you are a pastor businessman leader whatever you are listen to me your ministry or organization will rise and stop at the level of thinking of the leader are we together it is it is it is a very sincere statement you are a ceo of a group that group will only rise to match your level of understanding and stop there because you are the chief legislator of that organization if i stop growing as a person spiritually intellectually otherwise koinonia will rise to the level of my understanding and stop there we will only be recycling knowledge so whilst god is granting me grace to feed you with truth i myself am a student of higher mantles greater graces on common leadership and i mean it on common leadership you now sometimes when i sit down and read these books or watch these people i sit down and i try to say my god what constructed their understanding to be this flawless access to new ideas number three repetition of the ideas in your mind until conviction is established the third way to renew your mind is not just to have access to ideas but those ideas must be repeated until conviction is established faith comes by hearing and hearing that you heard it once does not mean you have built conviction there are messages i've listened to more than 1500 times one message god is my witness and i lie not the goal is not just to hear i have understood the principle i wish we had time i would have taught you how the mind works right generally speaking there are two dimensions to the mind there is what we call the conscious mind and what we call the subconscious mind the conscious part of the mind is the area that connects with your senses your physical senses that's where you do your thinking that's where you do your reasoning that's where you do your analysis unfortunately that's not where your behavior comes from that's not where your convictions come from that's where your intention comes from the conscious part of your mind then there is the subconscious part of your mind that's the seat of conviction whatever enters your subconscious mind must manifest in your life so the bible says in genesis chapter 11 right when you read from verse 5 and 6 the bible says god came down nimrod the son of cush gathered the people and said go to come let us build a city whose top will reach the heavens let us make a name for ourselves and then the bible says that god said in verse 5 can you give it to us please genesis 11 and verse 5 
Genesis 11 and verse 5. The Bible says that God said there were, he came down to see and the Lord came down to see the city and the tower which the children of men builded. Hold on. They had not started building. They were mobilizing themselves. But the Bible says God came down to see the city that has already been built. Once you build it in your mind, you build it in your life. So says God himself. Verse 6. And the Lord said, Behold, the people is one. And they all have one language. And this they begin to do. Listen. And now, nothing. Everybody say nothing. Who is talking here? God. Nothing will be restrained from them. Not which they intended. Which they imagined. It first happens in your mind. I saw these days years ago. The mental level I am now, the physical reality is not yet the reflection. Tomorrow will tell you my thought process. What you are, we are enjoying today was yesterday's thinking. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? Your family is a reflection of the thinking of your father and mother. It's a reflection of the ideas. Your life now it's a reflection of your ideas. Listen. The subconscious mind. There's something very powerful about it. The subconscious mind does not know the difference between reality and imagination. Wow. It cannot distinguish between what is imagined and what is real. In the world of your subconscious mind, whether you are looking at this or imagining it, it interprets it as real. That's why the Bible says, now unto him. Who is able to do exceedingly abundantly far above all we ask or because your imagination is a request your imagination is a request you are crying out to your destiny to come so the bible says philippians chapter 4 please give us verse 8 philippians chapter 4 verse 8 Finally, brethren, in light of the fact that your destiny is a sum total of your thought pattern, he said, whatsoever things are what? True. Whatsoever things are honest. Whatsoever things are just. Whatsoever things are pure. Whatsoever things are lovely. Whatsoever things are of good report. If there be any virtue, if there be any praise, what's the assignment? Don't just pray. Think on these things. Think on these things. Think on these things. Think on these things. Brothers and sisters, I think on many things. When I look at you, I think of how you will be. Not how you are now. No. That's why there's nobody I look at and conclude over. No. No matter how you are. When I look at you, my eyes are seeing your today. But my spirit, my mind has captured your tomorrow i look at my life today and i'm already seeing when the nations will come and worship ah. our hearts our prayer is to see the nations worship our desire and our prayer is to sing your praise from the ends of the earth that with one mighty voice every tribe and tongue rejoices our hearts and our desires to see the nations worship no leader enters a future he cannot see son of man what seest thou businessman what seest thou my brother my sister tonight what do you see i see pain in my family i see divorce i see the fact that i've been delayed be careful you are programming your mind to reproduce that Hallelujah. Are we together?
pray in one minute pray in one minute and say lord change my vision i have allowed life to give me wrong perceptions and i'm programming my life wrongly pray pray will soon stop but i want you to get this law it's important what you see your perception he looked at a weak man gideon and he said i see a mighty man of failure brothers and sisters since i was nothing and i didn't have anything i saw a great destiny that's what i see i know what i see in the glory and the power i see miracles that's my life i'm a sign and wonder it's in the glory and the power i see miracles signs and wonders ago years ago i would go to our boys quarters in the night alone i never knew my mother was watching me i would get a stick and i was seeing these days i was preaching i would stand i would just go imaginary in the air and say in the name of jesus rise up from the wheelchair that's what i was doing and i would feel the anointing because you see your the holy spirit works through your mind I told you your mind doesn't care whether it's imagination or not job said the thing i feared most came upon me i thought about it accident accident until a car killed me all i see is a great destiny that's what i see for myself all i see is koinonia rising from glory to glory i never see bomb blast i never see trouble i see myself as a leader over men of influence i have never seen impossibility in my life and i'm not just i'm not joking i said this when i could not buy a shoe it's in the glory and the power i see miracles signs and wonders i'm in the glory yourself many of you said why do the heathens rage and the people imagine a vain thing that's why they execute it you imagine a vain thing you imagine failure i am nothing i graduated with third class can anything good come out of nazareth i can't speak well i am too old oh come on now oh come on now we're talking about the god of heaven the one who can change people listen listen someone asked me one day and said apostle god has blessed you so much with gifted people how do you get them and i told him i see them i see a service conducted by music ministers who as individuals are international figures you have been allowing the devil plant nonsense in your mind there are ladies here whereas there is esther in you vashti is calling you your destiny is calling you but your yesterday is pulling you back remember you failed you failed jam five times what is the definition of a failure then you submit to it the moment you submit to it you destroy yourself listen 
every great man is a man who changed his mind literally right from the time i was having bread bread i will i will cut the bread and put granite in the middle i knew that the day will come i will feed nations ask a jimmy we had a song ask and i'll give the nations to you oh lord that was our song that's the cry of my heart distant shores and the islands will sing your life as it rises on to the heart of kings i saw myself i knew that there was an anointing every apostle was connected to kings i found it from scripture and i said no there is a mantle upon my life there are people here from our first crusades we will go and greet kings go and greet the kings in the land it was a seed listen tomorrow will never appear till you call it you will call it your mind is a fruitful part of your destiny the holy spirit is crippled if your mind says yes no demon can say no believe me hallelujah listen the lord gave me a very great testimony i think it was day before yesterday or yesterday something happened and um it's something I had seen in my spirit, I had seen in my mind. And I would not see it physically. And then the Lord gave me a very big miracle. When it manifested and I looked at it, it was exactly what I had seen in the spirit. And I said, this God, believe him. Apostle Paul says that he has a high calling. His calling is not an ordinary calling. His calling is a high calling of God in Christ Jesus everyone say I have a high calling one more time say I have a high calling that means there is nothing ordinary about your life and my life as far as destiny is concerned how about the heritage of greatness Genesis chapter 26 and verse 13 Genesis chapter 26 and verse 13 it says and the man works great say amen. amen and went forward say amen again amen. and grew until he became very great a version says and he began to be great that means there was a day he was not the man works great he went forward he grew until he became very great why because isaac was coming from abraham and there was that covenant of greatness genesis 17 and verse 6 genesis 17 and verse 6 our heritage of greatness and an enviable destiny in christ i will make thee exceeding fruitful and i will make nations of thee say amen, amen. and kings shall come out of you this is a promise now you see whilst you hear the holy spirit reveal this to you you are tempted and even manipulated by the devil to think of your background and you're looking at where you're coming from you're looking at all the things that have happened in and around your life and like nathaniel you can say about yourself like he said about jesus can anything good come out of nazareth let's start the scripture in psalm 71 and verse 21 the bible even tells us that not only does god desire for us to be great but that the greatness is given us can still increase he says thou shall increase my greatness and comfort me on every side so we are examining the spiritual pathway 
haven't established the fact that we have a high calling and we have an enviable destiny in Christ we have established the fact that it is not sin and it is not anti-Christ and anti-God for the saints in light to desire greatness because God put it in everyone to be great is that true hallelujah Genesis chapter 12 verse 1 and 2 this is the beginning of the encounter that Abraham who was an idol worshiper from or of the Chaldeans he would meet the God of the Hebrews who would later become his God and have a covenant with him that would be, become the basis for the coming of Jesus and even our redemption 12 verse 1 and 2 now the Lord had said unto Abraham get thee out of thy country from thy kindred from thy father's house unto a land that I will show you if you love Jesus read verse 2 with me ready read and I will make of thee a great nation uh-huh and I will bless thee and make thy name great and thou shalt be a blessing just stop there as at the time he was telling Abraham this it had not yet happened to him this was a prophetic word tied to conditions that if met will release and actualize this word are we together now so he's telling Abraham I know you are an idol worshiper and you have your house your family but I have chosen to call you now when you study from scripture the first person that was called was not really Abraham it was his father Terah but the father did not meet the condition that made for this blessing and now God comes to call Abraham come out of your father's house come out of all of these places because this is what I want to do this is your destiny I want to make of thee a great nation I want to bless you I want to make your name great thou shall be a blessing in fact let's read verse 3 verse 3 please give it to us it says I will bless them that bless thee and curse him that cursed thee there is a revelation here I want you to learn for every one person who curses you there are many them who blesses who bless you you see the ratio I will them that bless you him that curse you there are always more people willing to bless you and partner with God over your life than one person who may want to curse you so if the person in your village is one we are here the family is here the angels are here and in thee shall all the families of the earth be blessed now you may be tempted to say that this is just for Abraham but Paul gave us perspective in his Pauline epistle that when God made this promise it was to Abraham and his seed D that seed being Christ and Galatians chapter 3 and verse 29 says and if ye be Christ's then are ye Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise that means what he told Abraham through Christ can become our reality you see the connection now it is from Abraham through Christ now it is our reality so greatness is our destiny and when i say greatness i don't mean some of this carnal pursuit for greatness that has no kingdom perspective remember that we already gave a background tonight that everything that we seek and everything that we communicate it is the whole counsel of god but it is rest with respect to the revelation of jesus and the glorification of the same he says and i if i be lifted from the earth i will draw all men is that true and I've shared with you that one of the ways that God gets glory is by glorifying the sons. Every father is glorified when his sons are glorified. John 17 and verse 1. Jesus lifted up his eyes unto heaven and he prayed a prayer. And he said, Father, the hour is come. Here is the protocol for God being glorified. Glorify thy son that thy son may glorify thee. So if the sons are not glorified, the father cannot be glorified this is the principle of shared dominion the father does not glorify himself his glory comes from the excelling of the son the son does not glorify himself his glory comes from the excelling of the church in partnership with the Holy Spirit the church cannot glorify herself her glory comes from her dominion over the cosmos principalities and powers inclusive so everyone in the Kedah has the glory that they receive dominion over creation is how the glory of the church is revealed 
the dominion of the church is how in partnership with the holy spirit is how the son is glorified and in the glorification of the son the father is glorified no confusion this is the protocol have we learned today but there is a biblical pathway and i'll be very fast over this so that we'll pray many believers do not know that there is a protocol to greatness they desire to be great in ministry they desire to be great in business in career and so on and so forth and for many people um we just guess and shadow box our way and we are not able to attain that level of spiritual efficiency to rise so that we can do much for the kingdom now in your desire to be great the first information i want to bring very quickly tonight is that with respect to greatness there are two principal seasons in the life of everyone with respect to greatness with respect to the subject of greatness there are two principal seasons in the life two principal seasons are you ready the season number one is called the season of preparation please write it down the first season that every believer in Christ who desires to do much for the kingdom especially at this end times there is no instant manifestation in the kingdom the season of preparation please pay attention to the things you'll be learning the season of preparation It is important for you to know that if you are not prepared for anything on the day of manifestation you will fail is that true even in our, our human context there are students who prepare for exams and they excel there are people who have to prepare for interviews for promotion and if they prepare and they do write the interview or whatever it is in whatever form the interview comes when they excel they are promoted and then they increase in rank that is how it is also in the kingdom two major seasons very quickly the season of preparation now there are three phases under this season i want to rush very quickly there are three phases under this season of preparation the first phase is called the face of discovery please pay attention the face of discovery you will never be able to actualize destiny and you will never be able to walk in the fullness of your call until you go through this phase of discovery please look up many people violate this phase of discovery and yet they want to be mightily used by god yet they want to become influences and references across territories it does not happen that way this is the spiritual protocol non-negotiable no exceptions the season of preparation and the first phase in that season is the season of discovery are we still together what do you discover number one your first discovery in life if you want to be great is to discover god discovery god god almighty that encounter with the god of the bible is the first thing anybody who wants to be great the kingdom's way you must go through that phase of discovery hear me the first thing you discover is not the family you come from in order of importance the first thing you discover people discover all kinds of things but god the scriptural basis for this is found in genesis 1 verse 1 in the beginning god that is the spiritual protocol genesis 1 verse 1 in the beginning the first four words recorded in the bible in the beginning of anything you start with God in the beginning of business God in the beginning of ministry God in the beginning of marriage and a home God in the beginning of parenting when you violate that formula 
you have compromised on greatness God's way now you can route greatness through some other formula and then face the consequences of the side effects that come with them are we learning now in the beginning now most times people involve God but he does not take that first place we add him like you are putting salt in soup and we just add him go okay God so you don't harass me okay you are here no the protocol is that he must be the author otherwise he cannot be the finisher if he's not the author he will not be the finisher are we together now yes in the beginning God so you discover God we see this in the life of Moses I wish I had time but I want us to pray but just write for reference in Exodus chapter 3 from verse 1 to 15 Exodus chapter 3 the text for this is 1 to 15 but give us verse 13 for the sake of time the Bible tells us about this Hebrew boy who was saved from death and then he ran away from Egypt and was at the backside of the mountain tending Jethro his father in lordship and then he's open to an encounter before he discovered any other thing he discovered God the God of the Hebrews Moses said behold when I come to the children of Israel and shall say to them the God of our fathers had sent me to you and they shall say unto me what is his name what shall I say unto them very good question and God said unto Moses Yad hey wa hey Yahweh I am that I am and he said thus shall you tell them it is true that they want to be delivered but this is what I desire I desire that they know me I am has sent you are we together so the first thing you have to discover is God most people don't pay attention to God can I tell you this in your spiritual training with God let me give you an advice and you can use this as a template to mentor other believers when you are starting with believers don't start teaching them things about success prosperity when you really want to mature believers this is the way God led us this is the way God led our fathers this is the way God led people from scripture when you meet God he does not talk about any other thing yet himself until he reveals himself so when you are training believers you must take dedicated time to expose them to god everything god passion for god fire for god then when that foundation of god is settled you can now begin to delve into other subjects if you compromise this you're going to have people who are lopsided in their growth the formula is in the beginning god the first thing you discover is god number two for the sake of time the second discovery is yourself the second discovery is yourself now that you have discovered God you can discover yourself if you do not know who you are Sinaj taught us in her song that if you don't know who you are there are many things you will not be able to walk in you cannot walk in power you cannot walk in miracles you cannot live a life of favor why you don't know who you are the nation of israel forgot their identity that they were a covenant people and when they were sent to go and spy the land they came back with an evil report they said we were like grasshoppers God didn't say it Satan didn't say it they said it to themselves it's not like Satan said repeat after me you are grasshoppers we are grasshoppers no no by themselves they call themselves grasshoppers I'm walking in power I'm walking in miracles I live a life of favor I know I'm walking in power I live a life of favor very important 
you must know who you are we teach in our school of ministry and 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 there's a course where we teach the students who you are you know and i teach them in that course that there is something called identity crisis let's borrow two minutes of their lecture there is something called identity crisis you know what identity crisis is identity crisis is the resultant effect of not comprehending your worth the moment you do not know who you are the devil and men and this bedeviled world will paint a picture that you are not there are many people today who are under needless pressure trying to be who and what they are not it's not in the blueprint of their destiny because i taught you here remember i don't know what discussion we're having when i taught you that psychologically speaking there are certain indices that measure fulfillment is that true yes one of it is security another is variety one of it is growth another is love and acceptance there is a craving in the human nature for love and acceptance and chances are that if you have not stayed with the word are we together now yes like bishop david oedipo will say to find out your picture from scripture to be able to find out this is what god has said concerning me this is who i am based on what scripture said not based on what your mind has said not based on what your background has said was it not paul that said there is as it were many voices and that none of them is without effect your background has a voice remember who you are failures all through and you hear that voice then unfortunately and i know and i pray that it's changing thank god for christian schools but if you are not fortunate to go to a school that calls upon the name of the lord now you hear another voice added to that negativity by by teachers and all of that they look at you and say you are dull you are almost demonic i don't know how you got here i don't even know where you are going and i can tell you because you respect them you will believe it and then with every sense of respect and apology parents have a major role in in destroying the self-worth of children by the time you begin to minister words curses and words that are not consistent with scripture by the time an average child is 10 12 years subliminally he has already received all kinds of suggestions about who he is so now that they think they are weak the devil will now begin to market templates that can make you belong that's why people join occultic societies that's why people join all kinds of things they say they want to belong when satan came to jesus the first test was the test of identity the first test the very first test was a test of identity if you are truly the son of god turn these stones to bread jesus said i don't need to prove to you the voice already spoke that i am his beloved son man shall not live by bread alone but every word you had the word when he announced it everything under heaven had it including you don't ask me that question you already know i'm the son of god so when life and friends and society sadly and the sociological context of our world now forces you to do things and be things to show you are great you can tell them no 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 i'm a civilized person but i have limits i know who i am don't just tell me to dress the way you want to show i am civil to talk the way you want to live the way you want no within the boundary of of a civilized world i will conform to that which is an advantage but i know who i am based on scripture I am the beloved of God behold what manner of love the father has bestowed upon us in that we are called the sons of God there are many names that the Bible calls us light salt ambassadors kings priests are we learning now so you discover God you discover yourself the next thing that you discover under that stage of discovery is you discover your abilities your giftings and your abilities please pay attention please pay attention there is always a rod in your hand oh dear moses that is the rod you will use to walk signs and wonders it is not only god you discover it is not only yourself you discover there is something god has given you 
that is the rod you are going to use moses be careful to not throw that rod one day you will need it to pass the red sea one day to become the symbol of your leadership can i tell you this everyone here seated looking at me following online and will be following by way of rebroadcast or whatever platform it comes through can i tell you sincerely there is something god has put within you that the world is desperately waiting for to receive this is not just some motivational talk this is truth based on scripture nobody came here empty everybody came here as an expression of the fullness of the life and the power of jesus if you are joseph we need your leadership and your ability to interpret dreams if you are deborah we need your strength and your dexterity in war if you are moses we need your passion to be able to communicate with god and prophetically drive the people out of captivity everybody in scripture that was used of god there were things god gave them david could sing he used that grace to write the psalms today that has brought all kinds of deliverance david was a warrior and he used to fight valiantly in his lifetime david had leadership everything david had eventually was featured in the palace what do you have in your hand that was what the lord told moses what do you have in your house second kings chapter 5 second kings chapter 4 please 4 i meant to say the bible says there was a certain woman of the wives of the sons of the prophet second kings 4 from verse 1 she said unto elisha my servant thy husband is dead and thou knowest that thy servant did fear the lord and the creditor aha uh -huh, the creditor is come to take him to take unto him my two sons to be born men next verse please and elisha said unto her what shall i do for thee and he asked a question he says tell me what hast thou in your house hear the woman's reply this is the reply of many of us when destiny calls on you what do you have in this house of earthen vessel here's what we say nothing thine handmaid had not anything in the house except a pot of oil i have nothing except an ability to sing i have nothing except great charisma and leadership prowess i have nothing except passion and hunger for god i have nothing except the ability to be trusted be careful what you call nothing be careful what you call nothing i have nothing except some degree of business acumen i have nothing except that when i sleep whatever i see in my dream truly happens i have nothing except the dream that i have that i saw myself on a crusade ground while i was sleeping on a mat in a hut i saw myself speaking before nations that's all that i have he says what do you have you must discover what you have can i tell you this every great man that you admire today whether in the kingdom or in the secular whether in ministry in politics in business they were men and women who among other factors got to a point in their lives where they discovered that there is something valuable that god has given me hear me your sense of self-worth among other factors is tied to the perception of the value you have about yourself we live respectfully speaking in a very fake world today where everybody tries to do this and leave this if you are not wearing this oh how how much is your shoe two thousand naira and people laugh at two thousand naira did you make it yourself and people laugh and make you feel stupid and you stand there wondering what to do and then you go out of your way to live a fake life you've heard me say don't fake what can be real your self-worth is never about any exterior thing around you thank god for the beauty the glamour the grace that is wonderful but if you put your trust in anything outside you 
you are insecure can i tell you most of the things that we face in our world today especially as it makes for inter personal relationships and all of that they are a derivative of this secret frustration psychologists have said it and i've taught you again that you look at life from the lens of the perception of your value if you feel you are not valuable you will interpret life from the lens of that frustration if you are a happy man the world is a happy place for you if you are a sad person the world is a sad place for you if you are a godly person in the midst of all the decadence that goes on you can see god you can see what he's doing if you are someone who is a failure you would look at life from the lens of your experience what sees thou is a is a report card is god speaking to us tonight so the first stage when you are preparing for greatness is discovery discovery of god as the almighty the beginning and the end the one who holds your life and your destiny and then number two discovery of yourself so that you become healed once and for all from the scar that society will try to bring as a result of the injury that they will give you for not trying to conform to certain patterns that society depicts to measure greatness so if you do not find 10 cars in my house for instance if you do not find a great mansion for instance if you do not find me wearing all the designers that should be nothing is wrong with these things in themselves if you don't see me speaking in a certain way if you don't see me snapping in front of an expensive vehicle society says you are failure and many of us have been deceived to believe it so we live our lives in secret and open frustrations trying to be what god already said you are are we blessed and then the discovery of your potentials i first heard this from the lips of my greatly revered mentor in life and in death dr miles monroe when i read his book on discovering your potentials when he said here's what he said that the wealthiest place on earth is not the gold mines in sub-saharan africa around it's not it's not the oil mines in nigeria and iraq and all of that he said the most expensive the wealthiest place on earth he called it the symmetry why because that is where books died that were not written that's where dreams died that did not come to pass and he said little did he know that he would not live so long he said his assignment was not just longevity alone his focus was efficiency that jesus lived for 33 and a half years and his impact till eternity will continue to be felt and he gave his all and truly he died empty one of the last books he wrote before he went to be with the lord is called passing it on the principle of transgenerational relevance and legacy a man that cheated death indeed are we blessed you must find what it is that you have in your hands can i tell you this when the woman was saying nothing except a pot of oil the pot was hearing her and the oil was hearing her and here's what the oil was saying you call me nothing the same way your writing ability is saying do you know you can write about revivals is it not robert Lerden that wrote one book god's generals that set fire today only god knows how many ministries have come from that book all kinds of books gifts Billy Graham discovered that he had the ability to love the Lord and to communicate effectively. And he deployed that gift in his evangelical operation and today arguably one of the greatest evangelists in modern history who has lived. What do you have in your hand? What do you have in your house? It is time to go back and stay with the Holy Spirit and take intentional inventory of everything that constitutes an advantage in your life because everything God gave you that constitutes an advantage will be used for your destiny. Can I tell you this? Satan will usually flash to your face 
all the negative things around your life many of us do not see anything glorious about ourselves you are poor he will make sure you see that one you don't speak well he will make sure you see that one you spend 15 years in the village he will drum it to your ears but the wonderful things god has made out of your life he will not allow you see in the name of jesus may you see clearly can i tell you this our fathers of faith in this nation fathers of faith across africa every one of them got to a point where they had to deploy that gift that god gave them to be able to serve the purposes of god today if you do not find that rod in your hand you will be ashamed when you stand before pharaoh because there will be nothing that would demonstrate the glory of god it was the rod god gave moses that was used to prove the almightiness of god if you neglect your gift there will be nothing in your life to prove indeed that god is mighty over you you must obtain grace from god seated here looking at me following in all the overflows outside from whatever nation whatever tv station there are people listening to me you have dreams god has planted things in your life can i tell you this when it looks like certain individuals are superstars the difference between a superstar and whatever is this discovery nobody is intrinsically exceptional above any other person no everybody born of a woman was once a baby in the hand of that woman even if you were born royalty you were still a baby jesus as the son of god did not automatically become savior even though he was the word he had to go through this system of discovery at age 12 the bible tells us that he was at the temple what do you think he was doing at the temple he was learning everybody said discovery pay attention to this teaching because many of us are superstitiously hoping that destiny will just happen we are superstitiously hoping that greatness will just happen one day go better we say in this side of god's kingdom and it is so wrong provided you don't do anything until that one day more than admiring great people more than commending people who have done exploits in the kingdom whether in music whether in career in politics don't just sit down and clap for people use their lives as an inspiration that this man was once a baby in the hand of a woman what is the difference between this man and me not in a competitive way not in a way that communicates jealousy but in a way that challenges you greatness is simply the world acknowledging you for serving them effectively with your gift the feedback you receive from your world and your generation for effectively serving them with your gift is what we call greatness it appears as honor it has appears as priority living it appears as whatever it is but the truth is that when you use this that god has given you you discover it you have begun your journey to greatness let me do a quick recap and we move forward that there are two main phases when it has to do with manifesting greatness in the kingdom the first um, season is called the season of preparation and i'm now defining the activities that happen under that season that that season of preparation is broken into three phases phase one is discovery you discover god you discover you you discover what he has given you say amen, amen. the second thing that you do in the second phase under preparation is called development the phase of development now that you have discovered god now that you have discovered you now that you have discovered what god has given you look up please miles monroe calls it and the dictionary defines it as potential do you know what potential is potential is what a thing can become but it's not potential potential means untapped um, resources whether human whether material whether mental when you talk of 
a potential or you talk of a thing in its potential form it means that there is value that can be derived from it but not at that state for instance we celebrate and we thank god for the gift of crude oil in this country but if you happen to go and watch them mine oil when oil actually comes out and you see it you will run away from that place because it's a dark slippery paste of smelly substance and yet that is what has powered the economy of many nations that oil that comes out is not the one your car is looking for that's not the one you will queue to pay for discovery is good but can i tell you this there are many people with dreams with notebooks full of dreams the greatest way to bring your dream to pass is to wake up from that dream if you wake up from that dream then you are ready to make that dream come to pass but for as long as it remains a dream it remains there forever everybody who turned their dreams to reality did that by first waking up please look at me you must obtain grace from god to refine two aspects of your life number one you must refine your gifts number two in fact in order of priority when it has to do with development you must refine your mind then you must refine your gift if you refine your gift alone you will still be frustrated there are two aspects that must be refined when it has to do with development number one is your mind number two your potential the mind is a very important component as far as excelling and greatness is concerned in this kingdom why because you see the bible tells us that um how does it put it now it says let this mind be in you which was also in christ jesus there was a mindset and a belief system philippians 2 5 that jesus had that made him great he didn't just say let this power be in you it's not only the power that was in jesus that you need you also need the mind that was in jesus without the mind that was in jesus the power that was on him will be useless in your life you need both his mind and his power everybody say his mind many people want the power that was in jesus but you do not want his belief systems your belief system is a summation of your paradigms your viewpoints your perspectives can i tell you we are made or destroyed by our belief systems i have taught it here there's no need going to, you know to share it again but maybe just for one or two minutes let me tell you this that our mindsets are formed largely from number one culture number two our past experiences is that true number three our failures number four our association number five our levels of exposure all of these are factors that become the shapers of our belief systems the average person in nigeria and africa by the time you are age 10 by the time you are a teenager you would have been exposed to too many activities that would have respectfully speaking dehumanized and demean your perception of yourself therefore the bible says romans chapter 12 and verse 1 and 2 i beseech thee brethren by the message of god that ye present your bodies it says a living sacrifice holy acceptable unto god he calls it your reasonable act of worship verse 2 says be not conformed to this world but be ye transformed say transform what does it mean to transform to evolve into superior versions of yourself that's what it means to be transformed to be transformed means to evolve into superior versions of yourself like a fly evolves from egg lava pupa and then adults you must obtain grace from god to evolve you've heard me teach it that your destiny is looking for you but not this current version of you the version of you that your destiny is looking for you are yet to become it the most important thing about success and greatness is not the achievements is what you become or have to become to obtain it what you have to become to be great is greater than the greatness itself are we blessed don't forget this the most important component as far as 
your growing into greatness is concerned it's not the greatness itself and the possibilities that surround that realm is the person you are forced to become until you attain that greatness becoming is greater than doing you really become successful more from becoming than doing but the people that do know their god knowledge they shall be strong becoming then they shall do exploits it is knowledge transformation and then action not knowledge and action knowledge transformation is the reason why we do right things and get wrong results because you only do right things when you have become everybody say development i'm challenging everyone under the sound of my voice therefore that we have to obtain grace from god if we are truly serious about manifesting our kingdom destinies and rising unto greatness we must obtain grace from god having discovered our giftings we must begin an intentional a radical and non-emotional non-emotional project of transformation when you contend for transformation emotionally you will not go far when you feel sleepy when you are awake when you feel angry when you feel hungry no you must enter a covenant with yourself that come rain and come sunshine every 24 hour that god gives me will a major part of it will be invested in my transformation how are you transformed the bible tells you number one through the renewing of your mind how do you renew your mind by supplying into your mental space superior information superior word-based information and then repeating them until they superimpose the negative thoughts that have surrounded your mind hearing the truth once is not enough you must hear it again and again until it gains dominance over your mind then the bible now says out of the abundance of the heart the mouth speaks you can declare in prayer and then all of these other things and then the bible also says for as he thinketh in his heart or mind he says so is he he didn't say so he will become you already are what you are thinking mental transformation is a miracle believers especially people who are largely spiritual and passionate about god because of that drive to encounter the holy spirit the power the anointing of the holy spirit many times we who god has trusted with grace for the miraculous for signs and wonders we have um we have fallen prey as far as emphasizing the importance of being mentally transformed because we feel what is the need for having an enlightened mind after all i have anointing after all i can pray after all i'm spiritual it takes more than that as far as your excelling is concerned jesus did not just wait until he was 30. even before we see him praying we saw him in the temple learning when satan came to him he didn't say i assume he said it is written are we together you must obtain grace from god to sit down dear nigerians especially the young population let's sit down and learn this this passion to run around and have premature manifestation sit down sit down we must obtain grace from god but apostle i went to school you know it's not enough you must sit down there are three levels of education there is unlearning there is relearning there is learning there are things you have to unlearn there are things you have to learn as new there are things you have to relearn as emphasis if these three levels is not happening to you you are not really educated education is not just an awareness of a body of information no you must unlearn deconstruct many belief systems that are wrong you must learn then you must relearn it is unlearning learning and relearning that is education i will say it again if you want proper enlightenment not just spiritual enlightenment secular enlightenment you must unlearn you must learn you must relearn develop your mind ask any ceo the difference between an exceptional ceo a fulfilled politician 
a technocrat an intelligent person one who is doing much for the kingdom a great man of god our fathers of faith are all over this nation we love them we honor them we admire them can i tell you something one consistent thread that runs across all the fathers of faith in this nation is that they are exceptionally brilliant people mention one dull one and you'll be the first mentioning it and the only one mentioning it there is no dull father of faith that i know who is making global impact because ministry is more than preaching preaching only accounts for at least 30 percent of ministry there is administration there is leadership there is diplomacy there are all kinds of factors involved in ministry for them to win this much it is the holy spirit in partnership with an enlightened mind we have this idea that god just landed on them and commissioned them find out their labor find out the things they do the little that we are doing for God here, we can feel the heat and the disadvantage of not being enlightened. Please, I encourage you, from families to institutions, religious and secular institutions, business and all of that, we must settle down to contend for knowledge. Settle down to contend for knowledge. Challenge yourself to be enlightened and don't let the devil make you think that what i'm sharing tonight is not important it is absolutely important the destinies of people are tied to your rising and your greatness it is selfish to refuse to be great because more than yourself there are people who will eat from the fruit of your greatness are we together so discovery and then refining when you begin to refine your mind and refine your gifts it ushers you into the next phase of your season of preparation called the season of testing write it down the season of testing oh dear i wish i had time the season of testing can i tell you this if it is god you are doing business with before he commits to you destinies before he commits to you anointings and graces you must be tested genesis 22 please from verse 1 we're still looking at the life of abraham and it came to pass after these things remember genesis 12 abraham has an encounter with god he begins his journey 10 chapters later we see him stepping into the next phase it came to pass after these things that god did what tempt some verses will say test abraham what was the test abraham he said behold i am here next verse please he said take now thy son thy only son isaac whom thou lovest take note of lo only and lovest only son whom thou lovest get thee into a land of moriah and offer him there for a burnt offering upon one of the mountains which i will tell you verse 3 here's what the bible says and abraham rose up early in the morning and saddled his ass and took two of his young men with him and isaac his son and clave the wood for the burnt offering and rose up and went on to the place which god had told him we'll continue later on but look look at this look at this God tells Abraham, I want to make you a father of nations. I will bless them that bless you, curse him that curses you. In thee shall all the families be blessed. In other words, I'm going to make you the landlord of the earth. He willed the earth to Abraham. Are we together now? And then Abraham did not know that as he kept obeying God, transiting, he would get to a point where God will now say, now we are getting to the season where prophecy and destiny is about to be activated but not without a test the bible does not leave us in the dark as to the fact that everything that was happening was a test but abraham did not know it was a test can i tell you this this final phase of your preparation season is the hardest phase for most people ask any great man they will tell you the season of test is a season where you have to obtain grace from god the season of test will test you across three things number one it will test you across trust 
and integrity you will be tested you will be tested you will be tested your capacity to be a person of integrity will be tested beyond measure number two the second test is the test of patience the test of patience i can tell you this if it is god who is lifting you he will stretch you from pillar to post man of god let me tell you what he will do to you as a great man on fire god loving you your pastor just looks at you and says you are going to be the person opening the gate at the church you look at the potential of your anointing compared to the miracle that just happened before you came and say pastor sorry i hope you know that two among these 10 testimonies came directly from me and yet god says go and do it can i tell you this the test of greatness achieves many things among them it must humble you to your lowest otherwise it's not god lifting you some of these insulting derogatory experiences we go through the man of god may not know god is using him to test you nobody knows that it's a test is it's only god it's not like men know if a man tries to test you he's not god it is at the end looking from hindsight you will know that it was not about isaac it was not about abraham it was about god saying for me to commit this kind to you this is where many people fail they fail the test can i tell you this the test of destiny will insult your pedigree the test of destiny will turn you sometimes you look at yourself and say i'm not a fool be careful the moment it starts looking like god is just allowing things to fall your hand like we call it be careful there are people today who would have become mighty men and women of god if they had submitted themselves to cleaning the chair they say no way i can't be carrying this heavy prophetic grace especially when you are serving and your superiors may not seem to be as gifted as you maybe someone is in that face right now listen carefully i've trained the leaders in this ministry to understand that anything at all god gives you do it with all your heart you do not know what season you are stepping into are we together go and ask many great men do you know what stephen was doing before he became that mighty man stephen was part of those who were serving tables there are many great men today who started by scrubbing the floors of their ceos and while they were scrubbing the floors they will hear discussions happening and they were cleaning all kinds of things while their contemporaries were saying i'm too big they were saying no 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 i love the lord father it's a privilege for me to do what i'm doing the moment you are too big to be tested you are also too big to be great or too small to be great i have told god and i told god this right from before he lifted me no matter what it is that i have to do is in the name of the lord and i'm serving you i will do it with all my heart i stand before the god of heaven and i'm telling you now if the lord asks me to drop this leadership and leave everything and go back to be an usher even in koinonia here i stand by the god of heaven i will do it i know you think i'm not all right but i will do it it's better to be wrong with god let me tell you how you know that the door of greatness is already closing in you the moment what you were doing before you now become too big to do it check yourself go for a retreat quickly some of us as it is today if you hold a broom you will be sick may god forgive you in the name of jesus christ because you see can I be honest with you? One of the ways to walk in humility is that occasionally in your life, 
disengage yourself with certain privileges even if it's for a day and you go back to the things you used to do they will administer a measure of humility to keep you balanced because you see as you rise there will be people to serve you protocol you see me coming in and you see all these my people everything and some of you this is what you are looking at when you look at all these things they oh god i must be like joshua selman not his prayer life not his word life what you want is this one and god says you lie i'm not i'm not you don't cheat me like that you go back and start that school of the spirit the season of testing this is the season where it will look like god is not even answering your prayer i've taught you here as a man of god you can pray for somebody who will go for the crusade and be raising people from wheelchairs and they bring somebody who is suffering from constipation you will almost lay all your hands on the person and nothing happens and the person says i'm disappointed i was told so much about you uh, i i i thought and you say me and god says keep quiet tell him god bless you you say god bless you and he leaves and you feel stupid at a point you say god what is the name of all these things god will send you to go and preach somewhere as soon as you finish you'll be waiting thinking an honorarium is coming they will just carry maybe orange or banana hold it in a leather and say sir may the lord who called you honor you and bless you listen 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 and you are standing there and wondering okay a three days conference and god says accept it quickly and go he's winning you of the lost for things tests most of us miss these seasons because we have an idea that the moment you are gifted the next thing after being gifted is celebration you lie not in god's economy there will be a season of test this is where many people are bought destiny and are bought greatness they are too big to serve they are too big to pray they are too big to do whatever it is that they do Believe what I'm telling you. For many years in my life, I wanted to buy a car, but God prohibited me. This is true. And at a point I said, what is all this one now? A car that will help me is still this gospel thing. <laughs> the making of the great is painful. You are not the only one apostle you don't know what is happening to me you think so how do you think everybody who got here got here it looks you see that season makes it painful and you think it's only you this is why mentorship is powerful because when you see the people sitting at the table of greatness like kung fu masters they laugh at you they say just continue continue you will get here god can give you an assignment and say from today and for the next six months four days out of every seven days you are fasting and from 12 o'clock till four you are praying and you say god for what i thought you said i'm a kingdom financier he says that's exactly the training of a kingdom financier god trains you as a kingdom financier like he's training a revivalist you will say god confirm it with speed you will have a dream someone will send you a text god will send another word so that you must do it with the exact word you must fast and you must pray and can i tell you this you will fast for two three months thinking there is a mighty crusade coming nothing will happen till you finish that fasting this is a test i'm explaining this to you because many of you are in this season now i tell you lift up your eyes look beyond the pain your salvation is near apostle god is calling me to be a kingdom billionaire huh. he will not ask you to open an account he will ask you to empty everything in your account only god knows how many times that is the test i know you will cast that voice you say no god doesn't work like that i am telling you he works like that there is a way that god works like that there are demons yes but there is a way that god works you must give everything i've taught you that the price for all of god is all of you God will wait until they pay you arrears for one year. He will not wait until they give you a seed. It's easy when they dash you money. But God will wait until they pay you your arrears. And you say, take that Isaac. Go to a mountain. 
he can even say you should sow it to someone you don't like a ministry you don't like yours is to obey what do you think being a kingdom financier is just having an account with money and business ideas no sir what do you think being a man of god is just having a gift and a platform to speak uh -uh. for everyone you see who has tasted of greatness there is blood dripping on the altar believe me when i tell you this the only way to get to the throne is to pass through the cross i'm speaking to someone now because you are in a season of your life just help those under the anointing you are in a season of your life where it looks like nothing is happening this is applicable to all men apostle when i sleep i see a vision of a church and god is saying i will be a great man serving the purposes of god but i don't know what is happening why is it that nothing seems to be moving in my life fear not god is working with you let me tell you this if you never get to a point in your life where you don't even know the name of what you are doing it's not god who is training you you get to a point in your life where you say god, what are we doing just tell me the name of what we are doing Are you getting what I'm saying now? You can get a job of 200,000 and a job of 80,000 and God can tell you, go for the job of 80,000. You say, God, do you know that I'm taking care of four people? He says, just go there. Now, you see what I'm saying is not marketable because this is not what many people learn about kingdom greatness. Sometimes you just learn that, oh, I, I wish I were lying. I would have just told you I'm joking, but I'm not. What I'm saying is very serious. And I tell you, there are no exceptions to it. Swallow your pride. Tonight, come to the school of the Spirit. Don't you know, in His hands are the keys to eternal life. It's a little here, a little there. And then your day will dawn. Is that working you? changing everything in obedience to christ my brother my sister at this period of your life i want you to hold on the bible says do weeping endures there are times you cry but you still stay lord this fast i'm fasting as if i don't even know whether i'm touching my stomach or my back just fast it doesn't kill there are times that you sit down and you are praying and you are saying lord is it that i'm a pastor just encourage me by god says what you are is not your business you just know that you are a child of god and i'm making you become something if you want to claim the blessings of abraham be ready to carry isaac to that mountain we live in a generation that claims people's anointings and refuses their sacrifices anybody that you know who has become great today find out what they did there is always a season of preparation if you see anybody who breaks that rule run away from them they have nothing to offer you i have i tell you sincerely if you see any greatness that does not have a story and a track record of consistency with god there is not much to offer i've cried in my life oh you see me smiling all the time. I'm only smiling before you. Ask God. Ah, the burden of this ministry. The first time we organized crusade as a ministry. Then just starting. We didn't even have money to pay the transport fare. Brothers and sisters. This our generation must reduce this ungodly admiration that erodes the need for process please don't feel insulted i'm only stressing this because i want to pound it into your spirit behind every throne you see behind every throne you see there was a time i prayed for 72 hours non-stop my eyes did not know whether it was morning or night i don't say this to boast in the flesh but i am telling you ladies and gentlemen greatness does not just happen we live in a society that demeans the greatness and the value of people. No. I've had the honor and the privilege 
of knowing and being with a few of the fathers of faith in this nation I tell you sometimes when you look at them you can almost see in the spirit blood just dripping like rain on the ground their entire lives have become a drink offering before even business people before you admire people you want to stretch your hands to the sick and they are healed you want to tell someone stand up from a wheelchair and he stands you want to open a church or an assembly and God honors you with people please let me tell you this it is more than just claiming there is a school of the spirit there is a cup you must drink of and a baptism you must be baptized with they came to Jesus and said can you grant that when you are exalted we will sit at your left and right he said the space is available but here is the condition can you drink of my cup and be baptized listen Moses was a man who had been trained by the Holy Spirit do you know Moses was a stammerer and yet look at the kind of heavy anointing he was carrying and he was quiet he didn't prophesy when the anointing on him came on 70 elders not children a part of it all none of them could stand and control it yet that's what one man was carrying and he was quiet training gives you stability it gives you stamina when you are in the school of the spirit especially say as a minister he will teach you to know when to speak he will teach you to know when to be quiet it's not everything that offends you say people are offending me in this church you've not gone through the school of the spirit when you go through he teaches you stability why do they do trainings for people before they promote them even in organizations am i right on that that before you promote people they call them and they have specialized trainings question what do they teach them there that they've not taught them before you are taking a director or something to become an agm and you sometimes they even go for retreats our politicians in this nation go for retreats what are they saying there the testing process is very difficult God will test everything he will be using you to do one day you will pray and it will look like the prayer is not answered and God will watch you after you have preached and said there is nothing my God cannot do you will feel as if his headache whether it's from the back of your head or the front you may not be able to explain and like Paul you will lay your hands I'm sorry I'm not giving us a lot of scriptural references I'm hurrying up I besought him thrice that this tongue be taken away from me and he says my grace is sufficient for you for my my strength is made perfect in your weakness how do you help the poor when you never become like that there is a man of God that God gave an assignment for one or two years that he should leave all his money and everything and go and live somewhere in this nation and he went and lived you would think he does not have anything he was the sacrifice in the course of that journey he received a burden for that land such a powerful evangelical burden and it changed his life uneasy lies the head that wears the crown your season of preparation discovery development and refining and then the season of testing my prayer for you is that you will not give up during your season of test man of god hear me everything god told you he will still do that man of god that woman of god you are you don't look like it the bible says it does not yet appear just stay with god just stay with god dear ceo it's true that god called you you put your hands in your pocket the only thing you touch is the end of your pocket don't worry it is true you're a kingdom financier it will not come the way you think it will happen you are still in the school of the spirit can i tell you this don't be ashamed of your tears cry but stay whatsoever he tells you to do do it let's hurry up so we can pray when you are done with the season of preparation then you are open to the next season of your life it's called the season of manifestation oh hallelujah when you get to that season when you get to that season called the season of manifestation hebrews chapter 6 and verse 15 
hebrews chapter 6 and verse 15 please read with me everyone one to read and so after he had what he obtained the promise one more time everyone please and so continuation to the story after he had patiently endured endured what the mockery endured what the shame endured what the pain endured what the ridicule as noah when he was building the ark there were people who were laughing and saying this man only god knows what you had for 120 years he was building that ark but a season would come called a season of manifestation if you cannot patiently endure there is no promise and so after he had patiently endured he obtained the promise your season of appearing is when god opens the curtain of your destiny and you are ready to stand on the stage of life can i tell you the season of appearing happens so fast it will surprise you there has never been a slow there is there are faces to it there are three faces to your season of appearing but it can happen instantly look at joseph joseph is in the prison not knowing that by the next day by that same time he would be the prime minister the disciples were tarrying do you know the frustration of tarrying 120 people just waiting i'm sure somebody will say ah what is so special about the holy ghost that he has not come and they say keep quiet don't don't offend the lord just do what he asks you to do listen to what i'm telling you can i tell you this there is a mysterious way god designed the season of appearing it has indicators but you will never know the exact moment you just keep being faithful you don't know that by the next day you are going to get a job by the next day the business proposal that you have written you may never know oh Saul that you are one day left to meet Samuel when Saul left his father's house at a point they were tired they said let's go back he said no we can't go back we have come too far the same energy it takes to go back is the same energy it takes to continue let's finish up there is a seer and as soon as they went by the gates they met this mysterious man called Samuel Samuel laughed he said go up I will come and tell you what is in your heart you will get up one morning thinking it will be like any other day and God will position someone you do not know that you have just wrapped up your season of training I can tell you this how do you know your season of training has come to an end God himself defines the moment for you but i tell you this for everyone who ended seasons a man was there to lift his hands if you are joseph pharaoh is there if you are saul samuel is there for as long as you have not seen your samuel keep moving for as long as you have not seen pharaoh joseph keep interpreting the dreams for free a day will come you will interpret it and it will not be for free again but qualify do it for the wine presser for free. Do it for the baker for free. Let the wine presser forget you for two years. It's still a test. Because one night, Pharaoh will send for you. And on that day, you will not interpret for free again. Why will Joseph interpret a dream for free? Interpret this for free. And even beg the man and say, please, if you get to Pharaoh, tell him I am innocent. And he forgot but when the moment was come every night Jesus kept teaching them and telling them the promise of the Spirit is coming they waited and waited and waited for 50 days after he ascended but the Bible says now Acts chapter 2 and verse 1 we're praying now when the day of Pentecost was fully come he says they were gathered with one accord verse 2 Please read with me the first two words. One, two, read. One more time. One more time. This is how the season of appearance happens. And suddenly, he got the job. And suddenly, the mantle of his destiny came upon him. And suddenly, the woman got pregnant after 30 years. And suddenly, God opened the door. And suddenly, the ministry began to blossom.
listen to me i can tell you this you know you are in your season of appearing because suddenly things just change with speed you look back and say how did this happen when the lord turned again the captivity of zion the bible says we were like them that dream when the lord began to open doors of ministry for me when the lord began to show me his mercy on that wise it came with such level of speed i could no longer accommodate my schedules what is this new thing that is happening to me it's as if a curtain just opened everywhere joshua selman i know how seasons of greatness comes but can i tell you this while you wait cry but wait keep doing what he's asking you to do you sowed the seed like a fool and you are sitting down and god can i tell you this nobody has exhausted his season yet the moment you get to that season of appearing then the the next level starts with the same cycle again preparation and then manifestation then the next cycle of the next realm preparation you don't exhaust it look at our father in the lord bishop david oedeko when he was building the the faith tabernacle oh did he know another one was coming when baba devoy was building the old crown of redeem that one is a miracle already that is somebody's prayer point in many lifetimes but after enduring god now told him build three kilometers by three kilometers next instruction i remember those days in the ministry we used to sit on the ground on mats and then the days of zaria and then now he's brought us into the city only god knows how many episodes of this greatness will happen in our lifetime that is why it's dangerous to over celebrate realms they would distract you there is a healthy way to celebrate and prepare because every time you attain a manifestation of a realm the preparation for the next realm should start immediately this is how champions live champions never plateau champions never rest as soon as they pat their back they know that you are beginning another circle listen to what i'm telling you some of you this is the reason why you rose up in ministry you rose up in your finances as soon as you made 1 million 10 million 100 million you just plateaued and said oh, my soul find rest no you look at our fathers in the lord today it's as if they are just starting ministry I returned back from Enugu and I was seeing the posters of our father Baba Kumuyi everywhere I said at this age this man is still traveling and holding crusades as if he's trying to gain visibility please sir, huh? let me give you an advice when people clap for you sustain the courage to tell them is enough because I'm already focusing on the training for the next season Let me wrap up we're going to pray give us mark chapter 4 from verse 26 let me show you the three levels of stepping into your season of appearing mark chapter 4 from verse 26 please look up everybody never forget this spiritual formula we're about to pray and he said so is the kingdom of god as if a man should cast seed where into the ground 27 and should sleep <laughs> and rise up night and day and the seed should spring and grow up he knoweth not is it in your bible there now here is the progression for the earth bringeth forth fruit of herself now when it has to do with bringing forth fruit three levels first the blade then the air after that the full-blown corn in the air when you begin to step into seasons of greatness everything will not happen at once there are levels first the air you will begin to see God honor you there are politicians today for instance who started as local government chairman when they won they celebrated and God told them be careful don't stop here there is still another height 
and then maybe they went to state house of assembly and so on and so forth and many are still on their way transiting there are business people i remember for some of you here you will sit down and tell yourself ah i just made one million and one million will look like forever for you you are happy coming from your background this is a miracle and god says celebrate but a day will come you will be feeding nations a day will come you will sign a million dollars two million dollars and give nations and they will ask you how did it feel the first day you say i still can't remember it was pastor nathaniel bassi dear friend and brother who was sharing about the things that were happening to him that a time came in this nation when he was under his late pastor nobody knew anything about him there are footballers who suffered as if God did not call them every club side pushed them away and they kept enduring and when their season came just one person looked at them and said come and that was it they never returned again we are going to pray let me share with you a story many years ago I went to a place called Premier Hotel in Ibadan when I went there, um, it was night and I didn't even have the money to pay for any place for accommodation. And I'm telling you, I said, God, what is this? I entered the place, looked around, you know, wonderful place. And I was seeing people and I could not pay for the place. I could not even pay for any place. Looking around, I was just hanging around. I couldn't hang out in inside so I was outside and then eventually I made up my mind I said I can't stay like this till morning there was a church somewhere I trekked and I found a church that was doing night vigil I joined them to do that vigil so that I don't waste there's no need wasting time I tell you this and then a few years later I would go to preach within that region and right from I think it was from the airport or so I can't remember the whole story now I saw people greeting me, protocol people with cars, and they were leading me to my place of stay. Guess where they took me? When I saw myself climbing that hill, tears filled my eyes. And I said, oh God, only a fool says there is no God. When they dropped me there, they took me to their highest suit, and I was there. I usually travel with my people. And... They were outside, they were swimming. There was a program in the evening, you know, but these guys were swimming, playing table tennis, and I was watching them from that place. I said, it's not your fault, my dear people. They were happy, enjoying themselves by the pool, and I was watching, I said, oh dear. But what if, be because of what happened at that moment, I said, you know what, this ministry, We'll just fold it that's all do you know how many people are cheering you in the spirit and saying for our sake don't give up we have been waiting for you do you know how many unborn children who are saying doctor you will be the consultant who will deliver me or in case it's cs make sure you keep giving your best do you know how many people who are saying businessman it is your scholarship that is going to raise me to have an encounter don't give up there are nameless faces in the spirit joining the angels to say you have come too far you have come too far apostle you don't know how many times I've failed do not worry there is something called failing forward look up if you enter a plane and the plane is moving and you go back to the back seat are you going backward is the plane moving forward even though inside the plane you are moving back overall are you going backward that's what we call failing forward there is failure as an event there is failure as a person I'm speaking here tonight to a man of God who went for a crusade saying God called you and you went there nobody was healed only one person was saved the people said don't ever tell us God called you again and you return back wondering or a prophet who prophesied 10 cases you got zero you didn't everything you saw was wrong and you are wondering Lord did you really call me what of a businessman who five businesses you lost money you failed completely I bring you words of comfort in this kingdom 
there is something called the season of preparation and the season of appearing during your season of preparation you discover God you discover you you discover that rod that you will be using to do mighty things for the kingdom can I tell you this no matter how many times you fall don't throw that rod that is the rod that you will part the Red Sea with make sure by the time you get to the Red Sea you don't get there alone get there with your rod your rod can be your voice your rod can be your hands your rod can be your brain your rod can be your character everything that can help you today we thank God for the privilege of this rod he has so trained us to hold it was once the rod of Moses but when he handed it over to God it became the rod of God never call the rod of Moses again it is called the voice of you but when you hand it over to God it's now called the voice of God it will now sing songs that will go around the world it will now preach messages that will go around the world be careful when you laugh at people who are in their seasons of training you may be laughing at your destiny helper and bury your head in shame forever there are people who laughed at young people thinking they will never rise there are people who laughed at business people can can i tell you this sometimes god allows people to witness your failure so that they will be the defenders of your greatness they will say no 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 i saw this man of god i knew when he held a crusade that nobody was there i saw this business person i my mother even gave him 20 naira don't be ashamed of your season of tears the scar on your hand today you've heard me say it what you are ashamed of today will become your symbol of honor tomorrow are you ready to pray let's stop here tonight please rise up on your feet please no moving around lend me two or three minutes we are going to pray we are going to pray we are going to pray you are going to lift up your voice in the next two or three minutes and you are going to cry before the God of heaven you are going to tell him Lord I am in my season of preparation grant me grace grant me grace lift your voice and pray if someone pray grant me grace to discover you some of you are just starting in destiny God may not be talking to you about purpose God may not be talking to you about ministry he may not be talking to you about your assignment he will talk to you about himself he wants you to know him not your talent God first lift your voice and pray cry before the Lord your maker in the beginning God over my life so what will start as a ministry starts as an encounter with God what will start as a kingdom financing ministry will still start as God what will start as a kingdom political career still starts as God everything no matter what it is if it is in its beginning it is God Pray, pray, pray for your destiny. Salaska de Bashkana Catabranda Catecatos, Catabranda Catapacotos Cotopreca Legata. The face of development, Lord, grant me the discipline, grant me the diligence. May I not pamper myself, may I not pamper my destiny let pain not be a, 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 a distraction let pain not constitute a limitation grant me the grace to endure like a faithful soldier building building my mind building my gifts building my mind building my value building my mind building my value if someone pray in my mind building my value this is a template that our fathers followed this is a template that our fathers gave us this is a template that scripture gives us we cannot compromise on the pattern 
pray for the season of pests oh that when god will prove me may i be faithful that when god will prove me may i have the stamina to remain ye who have continued with me ye who have continued with destiny I will finish my season of training with honor, with nobility, with honor, with nobility, with honor, with nobility, with honor, with nobility, with honor, with nobility. Hallelujah. Hear me. Now you are going to pray for sensitivity so that you will not be missing on the day the grace for appearance comes may it find you where god asks you to stay listen the devil can cheat you through offense the devil can cheat you through impatience the devil can cheat you through the manipulation of demonic spirits do not be where the grace for your season of appearance will find you i like you to pray and cry for grace sensitivity oh god to be where my lifting will meet me. Is someone praying? Go ahead. Please pray. This is the spiritual strategy for greatness. This is the spiritual strategy in this kingdom there is no magic about how we rise this is the protocol non-emotional non-negotiable non-emotional non-negotiable i obtain grace to be sensitive to the man that god will send when my season of appearing comes i will be sensitive to the instructions that come hallelujah hallelujah listen to me some of you before that season comes prepare your cv and keep it waiting so that if they ask for it in two minutes you can send what betides a man when your helpers call you say i'm not yet prepared that was a mistake of the five foolish virgins they were all virgins but what made some wise and foolish was some carried extra oil it was time the longevity of the time was what separated them just because you are among the virgins does not mean you will see the groomsman five carried extra oil they said paradventure we are stretched beyond time we will stay from this oil and the others did not and even though the bible still respects the fact that they were virgins it said they were foolish virgins so while you are praying sometimes the prayer you are praying is not for ministry again it's for the days when you will need to stand alone there are extra things god is giving you don't throw them away don't throw the extra oil there are them that sell if you don't see them on time the bible says when they went to buy there was a lamentation behold the bridegroom the season of appearing is come and they, they say everybody got up they lit their lamp and for others the oil was not there and they said sorry even though you have waited this long you have still missed the season go to them that sell and buy that means you can buy on time because in any case you will still buy be sure that you don't buy too late buy when you are young buy before children come Buy before responsibilities come. Buy before preaching engagements occupy you. Buy oil. Buy lamb. Buy before your fame goes away. Build character. Build grace. Build stamina. That's buying the oil. Can I tell you this? I look at my life today and with every sense of respect, sometimes I look at it and I say, this, this public life sometimes can be so distracting. I will pass and see something that I like on the street. I can't stop to buy it because both the person selling it and everybody there, it will become something else. Once upon a time, I had my liberty to live my life. 
a day will come you will not have the time to do what you're doing i'm telling you look how long we stay here there was a time we had all the liberty so when god is stretching you see yourself as going to them that sell some of you god is bringing you here it may not be convenient you come from very far and god says still come because a day will come you may not even be in this country again a day will come you may not even be in abuja again but elijah you eat small eat again the journey is still far please go back and listen to this message again go to koinonia global you will find it on youtube listen again and again and again take note of all these teachings that god has been bringing call somebody who you know is going through a season he does not understand tell him i have a message for you there is a spiritual strategy for greatness let this message explain to you the happenings in your life but as for me i made up my mind not to over celebrate realms because i know compared to where god is taking me and compared to where god is taking this ministry thank god for it but we are only starting i tell you this is not what i saw in the visions no you must insist till what god showed you comes to pass when god showed this we saw nations not a city so yours is to believe thank god for what god is doing across the globe but can i tell you as a great family of faith let us give god praise but let's not be too distracted there is a distraction that greatness and success at a level brings we can become full of ourselves koinonia god is doing abc compared to the miraculous we are just playing child's play compared to levels of fire to change territories this is just this is still a school of the spirit stay with god and let him be done with you and you will see that you will send one word and it will shift the spiritual climate of nations i leave you with this word tonight therefore hear me the bible says seeing then that we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses it says let us lay aside every weight and the sin that doth easily beset us then it says to run with perseverance the race that is set before us looking up to jesus who is the author and the finisher of your faith modeling from him who for the joy that was set before him he endured the cross and despised the shame father we thank you for the privilege of coming to your house tonight in the name of jesus christ please would you give me one minute being that this um pastor came all the way to fellowship with us from goshen and we truly honor you alongside our fathers baba um Abioye and Bishop Oyedepo these are fathers that I respect these are people who have brought us grace and it will not be a wise thing to just finish like this so please if I would just invite him to come and speak a blessing on behalf of Goshen the grace upon living faith let's honor him as he comes hallelujah Praise the Lord. This is massive work. Let's celebrate Jesus one more time. I don't know about you. I'm blessed to be around at this point in time. The revival fire we are conducting here will last through your lifetime. Yeah. Every blessing declared today by his servant will stand the test of time in your life. Yeah. I join my faith with his servant, Apostle Joshua Selma. I pray over this house today that your desire is turned into a testimony. Yeah. Standing on the shoe of my father, Bishop David Olani Oedipo, Bishop David Abiyoye, I prophesy to your life, whatever is not working by the encounter of tonight, you will begin to walk. Yeah. I stand on the existing grace on this altar. What you left as consigned at tomb before you came here, at your return, it shall turn for you for your testimony. Yeah.
that woman that is looking for the foot of the womb, your baby is on this altar tonight. That application that you are long overdue for, for a medical job, your appointment letter is on its way coming to you. Every forces that make it work in the hand of our fathers in the faith, that same forces return home with you tonight. All your desire, your expectation. He says, surely there is an hand, and that expectation shall not be cut off. I prophesy to your life, your expectation shall not be cut off. In Luke 21, 13, as I drop the mic, he said, it shall turn for you for a testimony. I don't know what is it, but I have good news for you. It shall turn for you for a testimony. Be blessed in Jesus' mighty name. Hallelujah. Let's celebrate him. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. Amen. Praise the name of the Lord. Now, please let me encourage you. We, I believe in the force of ingathering, just like we have learned from our fathers. And even though God has honored us, please hear me. I am very passionate about souls. And this is God's mandate for us. Can I encourage you? Don't say koinonia has crowds. This is not about crowd. Make sure that every time you come to church, please drag somebody and bring him to the house of the Lord. Many of you, when you hear these messages, you think about your family members and you think about your people. This is more than just trying to help a man of God to have this. This is not the idea at all. I must lend my voice and challenge you. Be a soul winner. If souls are not saved, lives will not be changed. A territory will not be transformed. So commit yourself to the ministry of ingathering. Commit yourself to helping and letting people know and see Jesus. Are we together now? Let them know God is changing lives and that you desire for them to be changed. Grant them access to the teachings. It's a gift that you can give them. There is a reason why it is free. It has always been free. So that the limitations of resources will be broken and you would have no excuse for your edification. And make sure that you continue to grow and this word will keep building you. In the name of Jesus. Very quickly, I want to make an altar call. Please, let's minimize movement. You have received the blessing. You have heard the word. Some of you, you are in your season of preparation and you are even yet to start. Or perhaps you've started doing other things minus God. Please keep standing. I know you've been standing. Let's stand. We're almost wrapping up. There are people here. You came to church and you are saying, Apostle, haven't heard you. I know that I need Jesus. Others, you've given your life to Jesus, but you need to rededicate your life to Jesus. Whether you are here in the overflow, following from your home, I am going to count one to five and give you an opportunity, especially that you are within here. Please don't be ashamed. Don't wait for anyone to come before you. I'd like you to boldly make that decision. Come to Jesus. He's giving you a new beginning. Are you ready? One. Let's celebrate them as they come. Don't sit back. If you are coming from the overflows, please clear the way for them. Clear the way for them, young and old, all together. God bless our daddy, our father is coming. God bless you. Is this how you celebrate salvation? The wages of sin is death, the Bible says. But the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ, his son. Keep coming. Win that war tonight. You're saying, Apostle, I'm tired of my life. It's time for me to rise. No one in my family has risen. I know that I need Jesus. Please come quickly. I'm counting one to five and we'll be ready to pray. If they are coming from outside around the pavement there or the balcony, please come quickly. Join them very quickly. Two. Young and old, come to Jesus. Three. Keep coming. Jesus is calling you. In the beginning, God. In the beginning, God. You can make that beginning start tonight. Or you can recycle seasons of defeat or failure. In the beginning, God. Four. And finally, five. Praise the name of the Lord. Thank you. Thank you. Now, all who are here and in the overflows, just standing by your screen, and those who are following from your homes, your offices, following from whatever TV station, I want you to just 
um, while they are lifting their hands, you would lift or stretch your hands also as an act of faith. I salute every one of you for coming. It is honorable to come to Jesus. God bless you as you are still coming. Please join them very quickly. Please lift your right hand high above your head and say this after me. Mean it from the depth of your heart. It's not a poem. It's a declaration of faith that has spiritual implications. Say, Lord Jesus, tonight I have heard your word. I believe that you are the son of God. I believe that you died for me. I believe that you rose again for my justification. I declare from tonight and forever, Jesus is my savior, my Lord, and my King. I receive the abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness. And I declare that I reign in life. I am a child of God. I go forward ever and backward never in Jesus name please keep your hands lifted father we thank you for these ones you have brought them to yourself may the grace that keeps may that grace keep them in the name of Jesus by the authority of scripture I declare your sins forgiven I declare that the Lord grants you a new beginning the power of sin Satan hell and the grave are broken over your life I commend you to the ministry of the word and the ministry of the Holy Spirit by this I pray that you'll be established in the faith and even in righteousness in Jesus name I pray amen and amen God bless you very carefully I want you to follow the counselors they are waving the placard please take note of the crane so that you don't enjoy yourself let's celebrate them as they go you will meet the counselors very briefly they'll have a word with you and you'll be back are you celebrating them hallelujah praise the Lord all right very quickly thank you for your patience just um just one announcement tonight we're announcing that the public relations department is a department responsible for our correspondences with all other ministries and platforms world over um the public relations department of koinonia abuja is now open for new members all interested persons you want to be part of our pr department please i like you to apply you're requested here to apply a formal letter addressed to the head of department protocol and logistics and submit it directly to them or you can submit it to pr koinonia as one word pr koinonia at gmail.com on or before wednesday september the 22nd so you have limited time to do this on or before wednesday september 22nd the lord bless you as you engage fruitfully in the service of the kingdom in jesus name have you been blessed tonight thank you again thank you for your sacrifices thank you for all that you continue to do the lord will bless you and the lord will honor you in jesus name let's rise up for the grace the grace of our lord jesus christ the love of god the sweet fellowship of the holy spirit let it rest and abide with us now oh by the way next week is our miracle service for the month of september next week is our miracle service for the month of september here in abuja our miracle services are times specially dedicated to just minister the life and the power of god even to the sick and all kinds of oppressions please make sure you come with your prayer request it's our culture we come with the prayer request and we pray under a corporate anointing here invite as many and let them come let them know that jesus is lifting jesus is healing the lord bless you in jesus name let's share the grace the grace of our lord jesus christ the love of god the sweet fellowship of the holy spirit rest and abide with us now and forever amen surely goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives hello precious people of god trust you are doing well by the grace of god we thank God for yet another day to spend time with Him, another day to commune with Him. I want us to take a short exercise and that is I want you to click on that like button to help spread this good news abroad. I want you to help us share this good news and that YouTube will also recommend this channel, this video to others and they will also be a blessing. Also, let's take a short reading from Job chapter 38 verses 12. 
saints has thou commanded the morning since thy days and then caused the day spring to know its place now just tell us of the great opportunities of the great blessings we enjoy as children of god when we speak into our day and so it is what we are about to do open your heart be alert prepare your spirit as we receive inspiring messages from the man of god apostle joshua selman also if you are new here hit on that subscribe button for us and then on that notification bell keep sharing this message abroad keep sharing on facebook keep sharing on youtube to invite others to join us as we bless the world you are a blessing thank you